shingles, clay or good morning, good morning, everyone. Make sure before we get started, you like the video. And everyone who's new, make sure you sub, smash that like button. Inspection and estimate. Again, that number is 954-604-4602. I will Advisors is here to offer you an unbiased comparison of all your Medicare health insurance options. I will Advisors specialize in educating Medicare beneficiaries on every available option to ensure you make the right choice for your needs. Call us directly at 954-753-8080. 954-753-8080. This is Scott from Cut My Kilowatts. Give me a call today to save up to 50% on your insulation <clears throat> and radiant barrier. <clears throat> 35% on your electric bill. That's 954-939-1500. Here we go, guys. 1500. The Steve King Show is brought to you by Attorney Barry Siegel at the Siegel Law Group. Are you concerned with the distribution of your assets at the time of your passing? Avoid probing. Call the Siegel Law Group with nine offices throughout South Florida, from <coughs> Palm Beach Gardens to Coral Gables. Call toll-free 1-855-FLA-3782. You are listening to South Florida's <coughs> longest morning radio show, The Steve Kane Show. To call the show toll-free, dial one 8 go kane one That's <coughs> 1-888-GO-KANE-1. And now, here's... Yes, yes, welcome to the program, everyone. Yes, my name is Brian Craig. You are listening to Florida's longest-running radio show, The Steve Kane Show, on the radio since 1977. If you are new to the program, welcome. You're going to love this show, I promise you. We're live on the radio on AM 1470, 95.3 FM, and 96.9 on the FM radio dial. You can also watch us live stream on YouTube. Just search Brian Craig, The Brian Craig Show on YouTube, and you can watch me in high definition live, and also listen to us on the iHeart Radio app, which you can connect to your Bluetooth in your car. On iHeart Radio, find us by searching for our radio station call letters WWNN, two W's and two N's. All right, well, we got a lot to talk about after yesterday, oh man, so much going on, so much to talk about. You know, the Democrats are in a complete panic right now. We're in a complete panic over a lot of things. But do you know what they're most worried about right now more than anything else? What do you think? What are they most worried about? No, it's not global warming. What do you think they're most worried about? Winsome Sears. Winsome Sears. Oh, man. And I didn't even know her name until night before last. I had heard of her, but I wasn't really paying attention to the lieutenant governor. Were you? But I bet you are now. This one, I, I watched Winsome Sears, the, the new lieutenant governor of Virginia. I watched her speech yesterday. I got one clip, only one audio soundbite today, and it's a clip from her speech, which I'll play for you in just a bit. And But I watched her whole speech and then I watched it again this morning because I wanted to pull off this one clip. And I'm so impressed by her. She is absolutely amazing. And she is, Winsome Sears, the new face of the GOP, the Republican Party. And Lieutenant Governor is just her first stop. She'll be in Congress, in the House, the Senate, maybe Governor. You know, and this is amazing. Here, here we have an African-American Republican woman... That's right, an African-American Republican woman who is very conservative on everything I've heard her say so far. They're, they're in panic mode. They're in panic mode. And the last time we've seen the Democrats in panic like this over a woman was Sarah Palin. You know, any time there is someone from the so-called Democrat protected victim groups who achieve something in the Republican Party, the Democrats freak out because the Democrats who will tell you they're all about advancing African Americans and gays and this group and that group, that is not true. 
All the Democrats care about advancing is their own power and hold on things. And if they truly cared, like the squad, for example, yesterday, would not even acknowledge Winsome Sears, the new lieutenant governor of Virginia, because she's of the wrong party. And when someone is in one of their special protected groups and they become successful and popular in the Republican Party, they come after them to destroy them. And I promise you, right here, right now, they didn't, they didn't think about her too much until yesterday. Winsome Sears, her children, her husband, her parents, whether they're living or dead, are all right now being researched and investigated by Democrat operatives. Just like with Sarah Palin. Remember Sarah Palin? When Sarah... I, I, had, I was somewhat familiar with Sarah Palin because I saw her on Neil Cavuto's show once or twice before she was announced, that she, before she was running with John McCain. I saw her once or twice on Neil Cavuto talking about oil and things like this, and I was pretty impressed with her. And then when she came out and announced that she was running as vice president... There was an immediate liberal meltdown. Katie Couric, what do you read? You know, it's so interesting. Katie Couric comes out with this book where she spent her entire career bringing down other women to advance herself, which is a really petty, disgusting thing. She's a very bad person, Katie Couric. She attempted to do this with Sarah Palin. What do you read? What do you read? What do you read, Katie Couric? Can you read Katie Couric with the smart glasses? Remember, she used to wear glasses she didn't need, so she looked smarter, America's nasty sweetheart. But anyway, they went after Sarah Palin. They even made an adult pornographic film about her having an affair with Todd's business partner. Absurd. They found a story that she had uh, dated and had sex with a basketball player who was black while she was in college, and they thought, oh, those Republicans, they'll really drop Palin now. They sent, the DNC sent teams of operatives with cash money to Alaska, just throwing money around to buy dirt, true or not, on Sarah Palin. Remember that? That is what Winsome Sears is about to face, as is her husband, her daughters. If they're married, they're going to investigate the husbands of her daughters. If her parents are, even if her parents are no longer with us, I don't know if they are or not, but even if her parents have passed, they're going to investigate them to find something because they know, they know that she's the future. And I'll tell you something. This is, the, the, you will have heard it first here. Winsome Sears, I want you to now listen to this now. It is possible that the new lieutenant governor of the former Confederate capital of Virginia, the home of General Lee and all the other slave-owning Democrats, it is very possible, and, and believe me, the Democrats are thinking about this right now. They've already thought about this, even though I'll be the first person to say this. Winsome Sears yesterday just got put on the list of possible running mates for President Trump in 2024. I'm telling you. President Trump's team very well could be vetting her right now because of this. I imagine we're going to see her at future Trump rallies as he's campaigning in the midterm elections. I read up a little bit on her today. I'll go through some of her bio. I, I pulled out, I don't like Wikipedia, but she's, uh, you know, new, so we don't have a lot of background, so I Sadly, I'm going to have to go to Wikipedia. <clears throat> I'm, going to go at na I'm going to go to Wikipedia today because who knows, later today or tomorrow or next week, the liberals might go there and edit her Wikipedia to make her look like a bad person when Winsome Sears is now the face of the GOP. She's the new kid on the block. But yes, Winsome Sears just made the list of people who, as possible running mates for President Trump, in 2024. I know, that seems like a bold prediction. I'm not saying she's going to be, but she's on the list of consideration. 24 is a while off. A lot of things can happen between now and then. Who knows who it's going to be, but she's on the list now. If she's not, she will be. I promise you, President Trump knows who Winsome Sears is. He knows everything. 
A lot of people say, like someone in the chat said, she's Jamaican. No, she is not Jamaican. She is an American. She's an immigrant. She's an American. She's not Jamaican. She may originally have been, but she's a U.S. citizen now, just like Melania, just like you, just like me. Oh, man, yeah. They hate it. You know, they, they did this to Alan West. Alan West, he came up, African-American, Tea Party. Oh, no, very popular, charismatic. I remember we had one of our callers. We don't hear from him anymore. One of our liberal black callers, Blackwell. Remember Mr. Blackwell? Oh, man, he hated Alan West. He hated Alan West. And then he was at a, at a McDonald's, and he ran into Alan West at a McDonald's, coincidentally. And he called us up. He's like, I hate to say it, but I like the guy. I talked to him. I was impressed by him. So look what happened to Alan West. They ran him out of Congress. Ran him out of Florida. Couldn't have that. Couldn't have that. Huh. That is what they do, just like Sarah Palin, Alan West. The liberals flip out when we have someone in one of their special protected victim groups who rise up, escape the Democrat plantation, and become a successful Republican, and that's Winsome Sears. You know, I went over her campaign website just to find out where she stands on the issues. She's new. I don't know too much about her, but you know what? Either do you. All I need to know is this. I was impressed by her speech, and she kicked the butts of the Democrats. Think about this. <clears throat> first black woman, first black woman statewide office in Virginia. The stronghold of the Confederacy. The Confederate capital was in Virginia. This is amazing. General Lee and Jeff Davis are spinning in their graves right now over this. They wouldn't even be able to, they wouldn't even believe it. If you told them that this would happen, they would, they would laugh at you and would never think that it was a possibility. But you know what? It happened. It happened. And she is their nightmare. Let me go over a little bit of this. This is from her campaign website, Winsome Sears. Oh, and I forget. oh yes, she's a veteran of the United States Marine Corps, as is her husband. So these are just some of the bullet points uh, under her issues and priority positions on her website. One, enact a 12-month small business tax holiday. Oh man, I like that. Don't you? Man, if I were in Virginia, I'd be all excited about that. One year, tax holiday. Think about what a boost that would be to business. Cut unnecessary regulations by 25%. That sounds pretty awesome too, doesn't it? Cutting back expenses that businesses and people have to pay. Protect Virginia's right to work law and oppose forced unionization which is why we have everything in China, because the unions have forced all the jobs to China. Eliminating Virginia's grocery tax. What? They have taxes on groceries? Now, the way taxes work on groceries in Florida, uh, there's, there are no taxes on foods you have to prepare. I don't know what the other exceptions are, but there's no, you, you don't pay taxes on foods you prepare. In Virginia, they have a grocery tax? Are you kidding me? That's a basic necessity. It's called food. Eliminate Virginia's grocery tax, huh? And suspend the recent gas uh, tax hike. They just raised taxes on gasoline. Biden's raised taxes on gasoline by raising the price. She sounds pretty awesome to me. Ending runaway property taxes by requiring voter approval for property tax increases. Doesn't she sound like a very good conservative? Oh man. Cut income taxes by doubling the standard deduction. Oh, they ha you guys in Virginia have a state income tax? Oh my goodness, I feel sorry for you. In Florida, there's no state income tax. That's why all the rich people live in Florida, one of the reasons. Keep schools open five days a week. Wow, that shouldn't even have to be a position. That's, I thought that's just the way it was, I guess no more. Raise teacher pay, recruit more teachers, restore high standards for school accreditation, create a black Virginians advisory cabinet to the governor. Oh, sorry, liberals. Oh, yeah. You don't have the monopoly on race anymore. Make a once-in-a-generation investment in the historically black colleges and universities in Virginia. Hmm. Promote black entrepreneurship. 
fire the parole board and preserve truth and sentencing. They have a problem with their parole board there? Hmm. Sounds pretty good to me. Eliminate all taxes on the first $40,000 in military veteran retirement pay. You know, military veterans retirement pay is not that, you know, this, this state income tax thing has got to go. No state needs to have uh, a state income tax. A state income tax is just another way to feed the donors. Expand Virginia's Veterans Care Centers in Richmond, Salem, Hampton Roads, and Northern Virginia. Expand our veteran workforce transition programs to get veterans good paying jobs. What issue could you disagree with her on? Winsome Sears, a cool name, Sears, like that. Believe me, believe me, they're going to try and try. It's very difficult to find dirt on women. Men, you know, if they can't find dirt on a man, they can set him up oftentimes. Like they're probably trying to do or have done with mansion. But on a woman, it's a little more difficult because women have more control and sense than, than we men do. I'm going to take a break and then I'm going to play you the one soundbite I have today. It's just a clip from Winsome Sears acceptance speech. I want to hear your thoughts on this. In particular, I want to hear from all of you in the audience, obviously, and your opinion on everything involving yesterday, what's going on moving forward. But I, I want to hear your opinions on Winsome Sears, the new face of the Republican Party. Also, if you're African American, I w I'll put you to the front of the line, especially if you're a Democrat. If you're a caller of color and a Democrat, you will definitely be first on the line. Do we still have in Florida black Democrats? Has Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump won over the entire black community? Our number is toll free from anywhere. one 888 go one 888-465-2631. It's a toll free call. one 888 465 2631. We'll be back right after this. Brian Craig here. Conservative Doug called me live on the air to tell me about his experience at Friendly Tire. I uh, took two bone ties in the back of my infinity. I called him up. I, like I, I always really check prices for us. Half the price of everybody else. Half and, the price? And half the price at half Friendly price. Tire. Wow. Half the price. And not only that, his tires, which nobody, had, the tires I'm looking at, had any mileage guarantee. His is so you're a repeat customer over there at Friendly Tire. You bought new tires, right? So you bought new tires because they also sell used tires starting at just $30 for most sizes. But you bought new tires and they were half the price at Friendly Tire than at the other tire shops around town. That is phenomenal and came with a 60,000 mile warranty on the tires. That's great. And of course, Friendly Tire, they never charge you to mount the tire, balance the tire or dispose of your old tires. The price that they give you are out the door and on the road. And Everybody should go there. I don't know how anybody can buy tires or anything else. This guy is the, the best buyer. That's right. That's right. So listen, give Friendly Mike at Friendly Tire a call. His number, 954-977-9445. He'll give you a quote right over the phone. 954-977-9445. Online, FriendlyTire.net. Or you can just stop right in. The address is listed at stevekaneshow.com. 5415 Northwest 15th Street in Margate. And that's just a little north of Coconut Creek Parkway on the east side of 441 State Road 7. Well, Conservative Doug, thanks so much, and I'm glad you got such a great deal on your tires at Friendly Tire in Market. Yep. Hey guys, Brian Craig here. I have the MyPillow slippers, and Mike Lindell, he's right. These are the most comfortable slippers I've ever worn. And you can get them for 40% off at MyPillow.com with the promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. One of our listeners called in on the air and told us about his experience with the MyPillow My Slippers. Steve Kane Show. Hey, man. Steve Kane Show. Hold on. Steve Kane Show. Hold on. Make up what time, Jacqueline? Well, I am always here on time, but our top of the hour break, I'm never late. I'm always here before the show starts and set up. 
our top of the hour break, the length of the top of the hour break depends on the length of the commercials that are on the logs for that time. And instead of having everybody listen to all the commercials, like come on when we're getting close to the end of the break to start without a commercial break. Do you guys want me to start right at the top even though I'm not on the air yet? What do you guys think? Let me know. Because right, I can do that. I just didn't know if that was the best way to start the feed. You guys let me know. Uh, I don't go to Starbucks in the mornings on the way in. I drink my coffee at home now. I've been cutting back because of my blood pressure. Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back. 22 minutes after the hour, I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show. We're talking about the new face of the Republican Party. The face that the Democrats and the liberal media are in a total meltdown about. That's the new Lieutenant Governor of Virginia who is going places. Winsome Sears, the African-American female Lieutenant Governor of Virginia. And I, you know, I watched her speech yesterday and I was so impressed by it. Very good speech. And I just, I, she said one, one little thing here and I pulled up the audio that I wanted to share with you. This is in her victory speech night before last. I was pretty impressed by this. And this is the kind of thing that has the left in a to total meltdown. There are some who want to divide us and we must not let that happen. <clears throat> They would like us to believe we are back in 1963 when my father came. We can live where we want. We can eat where we want. We own the water fountains. We have had a black president elected not once but twice. And here I am living proof. Yeah, see? They don't like that. You haven't noticed I am black and I have been black all my life. Oh. Yeah, see that that's what's got them freaked out. She's speaking about what America really is like as opposed to she she used 1963 because that's when her father came to America with Jamaica uh, from Jamaica with less than $2. And now look, his daughter's the lieutenant governor of the former seat of the Confederate States of America. Oh my goodness. This, I mean, this is amazing. And I, and I heard, I watched, the whole speech is amazing, but I, that one part right there just really impressed me a lot. And that's what has them more freaked out than anything. She's also charismatic. A lot of people I, I, are calling her an older version of Candace Owens. I would say she's greater than Candace Owens. Candace Owens in the uh, 2016 election was anti-Trump, a Democrat. And, you know, and I, I like Candace Owens, don't get me wrong, but there, there are doers and teachers. And Winsome Sears is a doer. She actually ran for office and won. And she's going to move up through the ranks. She's very charismatic. She commands the room. In fact, during her speech, when you watch it, it was interesting. Here she is with her Marine Corps background. Uh, when the chants were going on too long, she gave them a signal and they stopped so she could go on to the next part of her speech. I was amazed by her. I was impressed by her. And I'm waiting for the first Democrat to tell us why she should not be a leader in this country. One triple H go, Kane one. Triple H four six five twenty six thirty one. Let's go to our phones. You're on the radio. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, it's Richie. Hey, Richie, the bus driver. What's up? All right, here's the deal. I I, I don't know anything here's, about. Here's when Richie the changes the subject. She loves this country. I looked at her and her family. I didn't see color. She's a she's a up. Oh, she's an. Well, how can I say this? She's an optimist. She's 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 not down. She's not criticizing. Well, what I, what I like about her, first off, I like that she just beat the pants off the Democrats, of course, but what I like about her is that clip I played where she's talking about the current race situation and what it really is. We've gotten beyond all these things, and the media and the liberals are trying to t uh, take us back to the 40s and 50s, so far as race goes, to further their agenda. 
they had everyone that voted for this guy in Virginia for governor was white racist. And, and, and meanwhile, 55 percent of Hispanics voted for him. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and think about it, all those so-called white supremacists that MSNBC and CNN were talking about yesterday with Yunkin, they voted for her, uh, for lieutenant governor. So I, I don't understand, would a white supremacist be voting for a black woman for lieutenant governor? I don't think so. No, but I, I, here's the deal. I think our Constitution is going to destroy us here with this, okay, because even if, he, if President Trump wanted her as the as vice president, I believe the Constitution says you have to be born. You're correct. You're correct. I was just looking over her bio. She was not born here. She was born in Jamaica, so she can't be the vice president. But you know what she can be? You know what she can be, though? She was born in Jamaica, and she's a naturalized U.S. citizen, so the vice presidency is off the list, unfortunately. But um, um, she could be a senator. She could be a member of the cabinet. You can have Pompeo run as vice president if, if, if our, our governor here. We can have her. We can have uh, her traveling around to Trump rallies too. Yeah, that's the thing. They don't. You're right about she's the face of the Republican Party. They, they are such. They, but they, you know, it makes me crazy to see them sit there and, do, and, and look, they don't want to see a successful black woman. That what they want to see uh, is if she's a Republican. See, people, the black, the black sort of realize this. Yeah, they, they want to see a Kaepernick who's a millionaire who's telling us that, that he and other millionaires are slaves. You know, and, and unfortunately, when, Winsome Sears uh, was born in Jamaica, which was unfortunate. In fact, she didn't become uh, a U.S. citizen until after she went in the Marines. Uh, it's unfortunate she can't be our vice president. But, but, there's a, but, but yeah, I'll tell you this. Uh, it, what's, 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 what's most interesting about her is this, is that while the Democrats, if you listen to the Democrats yesterday, they think they lost because they didn't go radical left enough. So they're doubling down on this critical race theory and all this other nonsense. And when we have Winsome Sears out there telling you this is not 1963 and, and we, you know, we've overcome all these things, that's, um, that's a very powerful, very powerful statement. It, well, uh, you know what's more powerful than her statement and her speech? Watching our president of the United States speak about this election and watch him fumble all over the place and he looked like he was going to crash while he was standing up at the podium. And I guess he ran out and didn't take any questions to him. It's, it's got, oh, it's got, oh yeah, he did take a question. He, he took a question from Ducey and he didn't even know about the 200 uh, uh, $450,000, yeah, he said it's not true. You know, I, I don't know if he knew it wasn't true. He says that is not true. And and then and then Ducey said 450000 He said that's not true. And and that's a little vague. What's not true about it? That the dollar amount? Are they getting money and the dollar amount was wrong? What, what was he saying? What he doesn't know is his Justice Department is negotiating Steve Kane show. with the lawyers for these victims Thank you. of coming here illegally. <laughs> I wish I was, a, I'm being honest with you, I worked my whole life, and, 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 I, and, I, and you're working, I hope you make a million dollars in your lifetime. I never made a million dollars. But, but to make 450000 and your wife get 450000 for a border jump in this country, I mean, this is craziness, man. I mean... And, and of course, I mean, think about if they started doing that, how much money would the coyotes be getting of that? Coyote, man, oh man, they, the coyotes would be richer than the uh, drug cartel leaders. This is crazy, right? I mean, and, but this is what you see with the. And she's great. She has, is absolutely great. And and uh, the Democrats can't show that there is a black successful woman in this country. I mean, the oh, Patriot the right, Party. I gotta, they, they, they I gotta talk about that too, Jacqueline. I mean, these people are devious. They don't. They want black people to think you're, you're, you're in a country where you're never going to get ahead, and they control. And they want to control the school. Well, if you heard, you know, see, Winsome Sears talks very directly uh, towards their critical race theory, and that has them freaked out. All right, Richie, I gotta run for a break. Take care. If you're on hold, stand by. We'll go to the phones after the break. But I'll tell you, you know, Richie had mentioned. Joe Biden, who again was completely checked out yesterday, you know, if if Joe Biden, who Ron DeSantis now calls Joe 
Brandon. <laughs> um, if Joe Biden took advantage of the offer we have here on the Steve Kane Show, and that is a free consultation with Dr. Mitch Mitez over at the bio station, it would turn his life around. It would be like the Joe Biden of the 70s and 80s again because hormone replacement pellet therapy works. I tell you that because I'm a patient of Dr. Mitch Mitez. He's our anti-aging doctor. He's been with us here on the Steve Kane Show for over a decade. In fact, Dr. Mitez introduced to South Florida in 2005 hormone replacement pellet therapy. They're tiny little pellets that are uh, inserted under your skin in your hip area and they're about the size of a grain of rice before you add water. And what they do is they restore your hormone levels to where they were when you were in your 20s. It'll increase your sex drive, your sexual performance, your energy level will go through the roof. You'll look better, you'll feel better. That's true, it's true. You know, and, and it also helps with cognitive issues. If you're suffering with cognitive decline, memory loss, and other things. If, I, I'm, I, I'm serious about this. If Joe Biden started hormone replacement pellet therapy with Dr. Mitch Mitez, you would not even recognize him after it. And it, it, he'd be standing up tall. He would have command. He'd be able to take questions from any reporter. That's how good it works. And by the way, this is in both men and women. And women, the signs and symptoms of menopause are completely stopped and reversed. Mood swings gone. Night sweats gone. That's right, vaginal dryness gone and reversed. And women, your sex drive will be restored as well. I've met women who are listeners of this program before and after hormone replacement pellet therapy. It will change your life. The effects are just as dramatic in women as they are in men. Take advantage of the offer that Dr. Mitch Matez has at the bio station for that free consultation by mentioning you heard them on the radio on the Steve Kane Show. Non-Steve Kane Show listeners pay for that consultation with Dr. Matez. But it's, a, it's something that he offers free to listeners of the Steve Kane Show. And if you're out of town, give him a call. He might be able to help you too. 561 320 8893. 561 320 8893. Dr. Mitch Matez at the Bio Station. We'll be right back after this. Do not go anywhere. You suffer with diabetes. Did you know there's a 25% chance? See, you know, Richie, Richie always has to blow whatever I'm doing, okay? I knew that she was um, a naturalized U.S. citizen. In our radio audience, in our, our coverage area on our radio stations are in very, very liberal communities. And we have a lot of liberal black listeners. And what I was doing with that was trying to bait a black liberal calling in telling me she shouldn't be vice president. I knew that she was a naturalized U.S. citizen. But Richie, got to call in and blow what I'm doing, as always. He's, he's a nice guy, Richie, but he's a klutz, you know? <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of liberal black listeners on our radio stations. <clears throat> oh, man. Yeah, wearing the shirt of my alma mater today, Trump University. Well, you know, Richie, Richie's a nice guy. I know Richie, known him for a long time. But uh, he's always got to show people how much he knows. He loves to correct people. He just doesn't. He doesn't get it. In fact, in that speech that I took that clip out of, right before that, I cut I cut that out because I just wanted that one clip. She talks about how even when she joined the Marines, she was still a Jamaican. She became a U.S. citizen after. <clears throat>
That's okay. <laughs> oh, well, hold on one second. I forgot to look up something. He means well, Richie, but you know. No, I, I used to, you know, when Richie was a bus driver for the city buses, I, I, used, I didn't know him then. But when I was uh, like in high school and middle school, I used to ride the bus around, and Richie drove me around all the time to the mall and stuff. All right, welcome back. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show, 37 minutes after the hour. I was just telling people off the air, you know, Richie the bus driver used to drive a bus in Broward County uh, right here in South Florida. And when I was in middle school and high school before I got a car, I used to take the uh, county buses all over the place, the beach, to the mall, to the movies. And on more than one occasion, Richie, we didn't know each other then. This is when I was middle school and high school. On more than one occasion, Richie was my bus driver. And sometimes people say, how can you remember that? It's because he is loud and he was loud then. In fact, I remember one time in particular where Richie gave me a transfer to get on another bus one day, to transfer buses with a little clipper on the card. All right, now we have on the, uh, we have on the line, uh, well, the Ed Durr of the Steve Kane Show, Wisconsin Gary, a truck driver. Ed Durr, he's that truck driver who's beating the Democrat after only spending 153 bucks on his campaign. Hey, Wisconsin, Gary, how you doing? <laughs> Good morning. Yeah. How are we doing today? Oh, doing great. And so everybody on the YouTube today, too, as well, the mega family. You know, you piqued my interest on the one thing about Colin Kaepernick, because uh, he really sticks his foot in his own mouth, because, <clears throat> and I'll tell you why. One, he brought up that about the slaves, and you know, and everything else, and I saying everything about the National Football League, but now, if you think about it, he was trying so hard to get back into the Football League, you know, to play, and you know what? He's trying to push himself back into his own words that he said about slavery. So, you know, that's one thing Colin Kaepernick is always good, and sticking his foot in his mouth, just like most of the Democrats, are trying to blame now that this white supremacy stuff, and everything else that's going on, the Democrats are the ones that always stick their foot in their mouth. Yeah. Us that are always saying everything, oh, well, you're racist, and this and that, or, you know, all the other common words that they always say. None of us that are Republican <laughs> ever say that. Yeah, and Colin Kaepernick, who, uh, you know, is supporting modern-day slavery by taking money from China and companies that do business in China. But, you know, this thing about the... Yeah, that's right. Nike uses slave labor. That's why I wear Vans. I don't think Vans are made with slave labor. I don't know where they make Vans. I wear Vans because they're comfortable. But, you know, the, the thing about uh, this thing about NFL players being slaves, I mean, give me a break. They're multimillionaires, a huge chunk. What's the minimum wage now, the minimum salary in the NFL? I don't know what it is these days. Uh, there was something about, uh, I, don't, I don't follow football, but... I'm not far from Green Bay from where the actual yard is, but, I mean, I heard something with uh, our quarterback here that he was unvaccinated and he got sick, but I think the average start is almost like 600 bucks. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's if that's slavery, my goodness, make me a slave, please. If you're going to pay me $600,000 a year, you can call me a slave, you can call me anything you want. I'll be a, I'll be a non-binary cisgender slave. For uh, it's six hundred fifty thousand, I was just told. You know that's uh, you know Colin Kaepernick. That's just stupid talk. And I, I saw this new commercial he made. You know the one where he's talking talking to the camera and then he looks left over to the camera again for drama. He he looks like a fool with his hair straight. He, his hair looks like he stuck his finger in an electric socket. He looks so ridiculous. Twenty or something. Because I don't think it would have been four forty. He would have been drawn in by it. Yeah. Yeah, and you know the thing with Kaepernick, he he was adopted by uh, his parents are white. He was raised by white people, and now he's made a he's he's made a very good living, I guess, you know, pimping all this racist crap. 
second, and you know that he was pretty much the start of it. And that's why you know, just like voting with your dollar, you know, spending your dollar where you want, you know, it's like he, he turned uh, the fans away from the NFL. And every time everything woke started going on, I mean, I used to love racing. I used to watch Dale Earnhardt Jr. But I mean, ever since he brought politics into racing, I don't watch racing anymore. You know, so I mean, everybody is feeling it, and even like the Dallas Mavericks, they. Uh, Push something now that you don't have to be uh, vaccinated in order to go to a basketball game because it's going to hurt his bottom dollar for fans showing up in his arena. Yeah, yeah, and he's and he's a big Trump hater, Mark Cuban. You know, I stopped watching that show. Uh, I used to watch Shark Tank until he started bashing Trump, and I haven't watched it since. I can't enjoy it anymore. Yeah, I don't watch it either. I mean, there's a lot of shows that I just stop watching, and then, you know, it's just. But it's funny because, you know, I know a few weeks ago you were talking about Cha- Chappelle. Uh, I was just coming through Illinois on Interstate 294, and he is going to be in around Chicago for doing something there. But, I mean, if he does that show, I mean, people are either going to love him or people are going to hate him. He's hilarious. I, he's, he's, uh, he's funny, man. He's Bill Cosby, Eddie Murphy funny. He's very, very funny. And uh, it's amazing what it is that he's that he's uh, doing. What do you think about this truck driver in Jersey who's beating the the, the Democrat incumbent? I mean, I, this is I this is an amazing story. He's the Joe the Plumber of the year. Yeah, that story I haven't heard, but the one thing I do kind of want to express right away: Megan McCain got blasted on uh, trending politics, saying that. The GOP can do without President Trump, so she's getting blasted on Twitter really bad. Yeah, I know that. Well, listen, look up, look up this story of the truck driver. I, it, it, I, I was thinking of you when I saw this. I know you're busy working; you don't get to watch all the news, but check it out. <clears throat> At a truck repair shop here in Green Bay, here, and they're not open yet, so I've got plenty of time to sit here. And... Yeah, yeah. Okay, man. All right, Gary, take care. All right, all right. Thanks for the call. All right, let's go to Mike in Louisiana. Hey, Mike. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> let, let me first start off. You talked about when you were doing your thing for Dr. Mateus, if Biden would go see Dr. Mateus. <clears throat> well, mm-hmm. the problem with that is they, the Democrats wouldn't stand for it because it would make him better, you know. Oh, no, if, if, um, if, if, let me tell you, if Joe Biden went to Dr. Mitch Mitez, talked to him about hormone replacement pellet therapy, and started hormone replacement pellet therapy, the Democrats would love him because he would be charismatic, energized. He would His press conferences would be like Trump press conferences. It is such a... You know, I, I go about 18 hours a day. And, and um, you know, how do you think I go so long every day? Hormone replacement pellet therapy with Dr. Mitch Mitez. That's how. He wouldn't be... He wouldn't be napping at these conferences like he like he was caught doing at that climate change conference, you know. No, he he would have more energy. He would have energy like Trump. Yep, yep. You know, he would have energy like Trump, no doubt about it. <clears throat> you know, think about this about Winston says They the, they don't that any person of color that gets off the plantation and speaks like she's speaking, they don't like her. They don't like them. You know, and that's the truth. I mean, they want people, oh, poor, uh, racist. Uh, they want people thinking like uh, Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson and all these other liberal uh, black people. Yeah. Oh, no, that's exactly right. <clears throat> no, there's no, there's no, there's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, I know. That's what they want. And, yeah, I'd love for her. She can't be vice president, but that's not going to stop her from being senator. I mean, she could probably after he after he runs. Well, let me tell you, she's she's very important because as we've seen, parents and school boards and school curriculum are a big issue coming up in the midterms. And and that clip I play, which I'll play again later in the show, uh, from Lieutenant Governor Sears. She, uh, she goes against everything that they're preaching. That, and, and what they're preaching is that they want us to think that it's still the 50s in this country so far as race relations go. And we're not, it's not, th- those days are over. 
Let me tell you, I, got, I have an interracial family. Never encountered a problem. Never. Except from criticism from black people who don't like interracial families. <clears throat> Segregated schools. You know, they want us, that's where they want us to go. Yeah. Well, they're doing it. They're segregating our society and, and, and our schools again on purpose. Yeah. I, hey, listen, I got, I got to run for our last break, but I, pre, I appreciate the call. I remember when my daughter was like a, a baby and a toddler and I, I, I was at the store alone. And th this happened so many times. I would be in the checkout line at the grocery store or the department store and there'd be an African-American cashier checking me out. And she would say, they, I, I got this question so many times. First couple times I had that not, but I was used to it after a while. They would say, are you married to a sister? And I'm like, what, a nun? And they, they, I would say, they're like, I, and they would say, no, a, a, a black girl. You know, they would always ask me that. All right, listen, we'll take our last break of the first hour of the program. I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show on the radio since 1977. We'll be right back after this. Do you think you've come in contact with someone who has coronavirus? Steve Kane's wife, Lori, did, and she went to any lab test now of Coral Springs to find out if she has coronavirus. So I came into contact with somebody who had tested positive for COVID and I was scared and I needed results right away so I went to any lab test now in Coral Springs. It was great. I didn't want to have to stay in line for two hours and have a swab stuffed down my nose into my brain. It was very pleasant. I made an appointment. They got me in within the hour. I was out of there within 20 minutes. Thank goodness the test was negative and I can go back to work tomorrow. They also tested me for the antibodies and I haven't been exposed. So do what I did. Go over to any lab test now of Coral Springs. They give great rates for Steve King listeners and tell them we sent you. It's worth 15 minutes of your time to have peace of mind and know that you and your family are safe. Any lab test now of Coral Springs is located at 955 North University Drive on the southeast corner of University and Ramblewood near the Coral Square Mall. You can call them at 954-906-5983. 954-906-5983. Any lab test now of Boca is in the Sandalfoot Plaza where the Western Beef is, south of Palmetto Park Road and north of Hillsboro. Call them at 561-237-5009. 561-237-5009. Make sure you tell them you heard about them on the radio. Listen to the Steve Cage Show the Heart Radio. Just search for you. All right. 11 before the top of the hour. I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show. On the radio since 1977, our number toll free from anywhere, 1 888 Go Kane 1 888 465 2631. I want to tell you about the best Christmas gifts ever and the best prices ever. And that, of course, is from the great Mike Lindell of My Pillow. You know, they, these liberals have worked so hard. He's been he he and my pillow have been taken out of pretty much every retailer. They've been taken off of uh, QVC and home shopping, everything else. They're trying to cancel this guy. And I'm going to tell you this: you'll wake up with a smile and get the best sleep you've ever had when you use any of the products from my pillow. And they make great Christmas gifts too. In fact, as I said, the best Christmas gifts ever. Now, Mike Lindell was was so impressed with the response that we've gotten here on the Steve Kane Show that he gave us our own section of the website, mypillow.com slash Kane, K-A-N-E, mypillow.com slash Kane. And when you go there and use our promo code Kane, the all-time lowest deals you'll find ever, anywhere. Uh, the 100% Giza Cotton Dream Sheets. This is the best Christmas gift. I mean, this is, these are just amazing gifts. These prices are incredibly low. Buy one set of MyPillow Giza Dream Sheets, get a second set free. You can even buy one set if you just need one set at a discounted price, as low as $49.99. That's amazing. That's amazing. As low as $49.99. These are usually $100 bucks with the promo code Kane. The MyPillow itself, if you do not have a MyPillow, this is your chance to get one. Now, again, this is on our website section, MyPillow.com slash Kane with our promo code Kane. 75% off the MyPillow. 75% off the MyPillow. That's a better deal than I got when I bought mine with our promo code Kane. The My Slippers. I have the MyPillow My Slippers. They are spectacular. They are so comfortable. I wear them all the time. When I get home from work, I put them on. On the weekends, that's all I wear. Even when I'm out on the weekends, I'm wearing my MyPillow, my slippers, 50% off with 
the promo code Kane. And of course, the MyPillow mattress topper, 50% off the MyPillow mattress topper. You heard me right, 50% off. And you heard me talking about how the MyPillow mattress topper got rid of all that back pain I was suffering from. I was almost in tears I was in so much pain. I thought I was going to have to take the next day off work. I, when I got out of bed, out of that hotel room bed, I couldn't even stand up straight. I had to force myself up. It was so painful. Felt like I had bones rubbing together inside my back. That, that my pillow mattress topper, in less than an hour, I was laying on it. The pain was gone. Disappeared. It's not come back. 50% off the my pillow mattress topper with the promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. These all make great Christmas gifts. And if you have uh, recipients that are out of town, send it to them. You can, you can send it directly to them. They'll love you for it. All right? That's right. The great Mike Lindell. Do not let them cancel Mike Lindell. I was reading a story this morning. Uh, the Border Patrol found undocumented girls, four and eight years old, trapped beneath plywood in a bed of a pickup truck. No boys, just girls. The girls were among 10 undocumented individuals. It was a 2000 Dodge Ram. Stop for inspection. Agents were surprised to find two little girls, ages 4 and 8, and a 17-year-old unaccompanied minor, also female. They were Mexican and Guatemalan. The driver was arrested and is facing human smuggling charges. There you go, Biden. Great job, Biden. Great job, Harris. What do you think was going to happen to these four, this four-year-old, this eight-year-old, and this 17-year-old girl undocumented that were hidden under plywood in the bed of a Dodge Ram coming across the border? What the hell is wrong with Joe Biden? You know, Kamala Harris running around thinking that she's some great female icon for womanhood, womanhood, women's rights, and all of this stuff. She's the border czar, czarina. She's, czar is masculine. She's the border czarina. What do you think was going to happen to that four-year-old girl, that eight-year-old girl, and that 17-year-old girl? All three of them were going to become sex slaves somewhere, even the little girls. That's what Biden and Kamala and the Democrats are doing. And you know what I wonder about these girls? Were they kidnapped from their parents? My goodness, their poor parents. And the four-year-old and the eight-year-old, they may not even be able to tell people how to find their parents. The 17-year-old girl, well, she might have some hope. You should be ashamed of yourselves. You know, President Trump stopped so much sex slavery on the planet. He shut down Backpage. Remember this? That's where all the sex trafficking prostitutes were being advertised. All the sex slaves were being advertised. He shut that down. That took a dent into the sex slavery business. And with his shutdown of the southern border and the human trafficking stop, that shut it down too. But you know what? Sex trafficking's back. It's one area of the economy that Biden and Kamala have caused a boom in. What do you say to yourselves at night, Democrats? What do you say to your... I know Democrats are ashamed. Do you know why I know Democrats are ashamed? Because they, we don't hear from them on the phones too much these days lately. It's not just because they're losing. They're ashamed. They're embarrassed. And you know what? You should be. President Trump deserves to be awarded by uh, the National Organization for Women and all the other um, feminist organizations out there for having stopped sex slavery. We know what would have happened, and it ain't pretty. You know, I, I, I don't understand for the life of me why anyone would be a Democrat when you see what is going on. How can you be a Democrat? If our party were responsible for things like this, 
I'd be out of there. Everything we do is to try to stop this business. I tell you. I tell you, it's disgusting. Now, I saw uh, the final installment of Patriot Purge last night. Anyone uh, who's seen Patriot Purge, I'd also like to hear from you. Um, out of the three parts, it's free, Patriot Purge. You do not have to pay for the Fox Nation app to see Patriot Purge. It is free on Tucker Carlson's website. <clears throat> okay? But Patriot Purge, I'm here to tell you, um, shocked me beyond belief. Part three, a lot of it had to do with Ashley Babbitt. And I saw some footage that I've not seen before involving Ashley Babbitt. And it's very disturbing. It was very disturbing. Of the three parts, the second part was, to me, the most moving. You know, and I saw Tucker Carlson's show on Fox last night. He was talking a little bit about it. I think we're going to see... Um, Patriot Purge and other places so more people can be exposed to it. But I, each, each section was really short. Last night, it was only about 20 minutes. The third part was about 20 minutes. First one was 26. The second one was less than 30 minutes too. I think what, what Tucker's main purpose with Patriot Purge was to start a dialogue. You know, I, I was watching Geraldo Rivera with Rachel Campos Duffy on the that uh, 7 o'clock show last night. I was watching it at the end because I was waiting for Tucker to call in. I, or come on. I wanted to hear what Tucker had to say about the election. And I, I wished Geraldo would get back to his roots over there at Fox, back to his investigative reporting days. You know, he, he was fired from ABC News, Geraldo. He, remember, he was on 2020 before John Stossel. And he was fired for an investigative report that he did on Marilyn Monroe and the Kennedys. And he had FBI agents interviewed who re, uh, were uh, at Hoover's orders. Jagger Hoover was recording the Kennedys, and they had recordings of both Kennedys, one after the other, having sex with Marilyn Monroe. They fired him for that. And he's always been a controversial guy. I haven't always agreed with what he did. But January 6th, and everything that went on there would be a perfect opportunity for Geraldo Rivera to have one last uh, hurrah, come out with a with an incredible story right at the top, or, uh, you know, of this because no one is really covering this. But he's so bogged down in his New York liberalism that he just can't see straight over there, you know. And um, if you've not seen Patriot Purge, please do. It's free on Tucker Carlson's website. Is it TuckerCarlson.com? Just Google Tucker, Car Tucker Carlson. His site will come up. Watch Patriot Purge after we go off the air at 9 a.m. Don't do it during the show. <laughs> okay? And it's uh, only about an hour. The whole, All three parts together are about an hour. And it'll be the most important hour of television, investigative journalism you've seen in a long, long time. And uh, don't tell yourself you know everything that happened on January 6th. In, in Patriot Purge, he has brought up things in ways that I had not considered before. And it's very powerful, very important. And also, uh, tell your friends about it. Everyone needs to see Patriot Purge. It's very, very frightening, but important as well. All right, 7 o'clock in the morning, it's the Steve Kane Show. My name's Brian Craig. We're here live in the mornings from 6 until 9 a.m. Taking your calls live on the air, talking about the issues. We'll take a break, touch on some more stuff after this. Don't go anywhere. We've got you covered. AM 1470, FM 95.3, 96.9. South Florida's FM Money Talk Radio Network. WWNN, Pompano Beach. Hey guys, Brian Craig here. I am the MyPillow slippers and Mike Lindell. He's right. These are the most comfortable slippers I've ever worn. And you can get them for 40% off at MyPillow.com with the promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. One of our listeners called in on the air and told us about his experience with the MyPillow My Slippers. Brian, I have the uh, my fellow uh, slippers, and I have neuropathy. These are fantastic slippers. Really? Which ones do you have? Which style do you have? The fur line. Oh, the slip-on fur line ones? Yeah, inside, outside. What is neuropathy, and what are the symptoms? Well, the nerves in your feet start going bad, and it's uh, it affects your balance, and uh, it's painful. 
So you're wearing the My Pillow My Slippers, which, by the way, 40% off with the promo code KANE, K A N E, and it's helped with your neuropathy. Yes, yes, it is. It's, it's, very, it's much. I have to wear slippers uh, at home. I can't, I can't go barefoot or even with socks on. Wow. So I have, uh, I have to wear that. And I also have the My Pillow Pillow and the My Pillow mattress topper and the. That mattress uh, topper is unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, oh, my, my wife loves it. Oh, man. I know. They're all great. Yeah, I know. And by the way, when you use the promo code Kane at checkout, 40% off the MyPillow slippers, 30% off the MyPillow mattress topper, and you get two free MyPillows with it. So it's great. Well, that's awesome. Order your MyPillow My Slippers 40% off with the promo code Kane at checkout, K A N E, at mypillow.com. Or call 1 800 716 4879. Yeah. It's real. It was real. Promo yeah. Code Kane. I was very surprised. Ryan Craig here. Conservative Doug called me up live on the air to tell me about his experience at Friendly Tire. Steve Kane Show. I know. I know. Steve Kane show. Hey. Steve Kane show. Richie called just a minute ago. He said, you know the Rittenhouse trial is going on, don't you? Like, yeah, I'm here till 9, you know. I was actually was reading an article about Rittenhouse when he called in. Now I'm like, if I bring it up now, he'll think he's got me to talk about. It. I don't know. Conflicts. All righty. Welcome back. Five minutes after the hour. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show. <clears throat> Florida's longest-running radio show on the radio since 1977. Let's take some calls, and I'll bring up some new topics Good morning. You're on the radio. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Brian. It's Greg. Oh, Greg, too. How you doing? Yes. I'm doing okay. You know, but I'm getting a little disturbed by your show. <clears throat> I, I was in the car with my children, and they heard some comments. I think you're letting some racial and some, like, comments that are unacceptable. Oh. When someone says, when someone says <clears throat> and I, you'll know who I'm talking about once I tell you, She's clean, or he's clean, referring to a black, you know, an African American. You remember that comment? Yeah, who said that? Who made that comment? I don't want to throw him under. You talking about Richie? Okay. Well, that the, the reason, and you think, okay, when he said he was talking about clean, was he? Who was he talking about? Lieutenant Governor Sears of Virginia. Okay, and you think and you think when he said that it was what racist or something? Do you think it was racial connotation? I'm gonna. You brought it up. I asked you first. Was it racist? Oh, okay. 
See, I, I understand. Uh, no, 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 by the way, no, by the way, no, by the way. See, you're just not informed. What, what, what do you think he was referencing, Richie? Why did he make that reference? Appearance. Appearance of what? What was he trying to appear? Yeah. No, what I'm saying is that other... African Americans. Also, like when I, I, I don't let my kids listen to the show. Like I, 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 I know they might they might grow up right, like my daughter has if they listen to the show. Yeah, I do my podcast from home. Nine years, my daughter's grown up with listening to me. My 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 daughter is off to an Ivy League school. Oh, I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed. Well, 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 maybe maybe you should go back to school, and then you would understand what Richie was referencing. What that was, what he was referenced, he didn't say anything that was uh, with, with a racial intention. He was, he was making reference to Joe Biden. Joe Biden, there's a very famous quote of Joe Biden's. You can find it on YouTube. We used to play it all the time. When uh, Obama was running for president, he said on television, Joe Biden, he was Senator Joe Biden then, he said, and, and Al Sharpton called him a racist for this, he said, uh, Barack Obama is articulate and clean. Someone should write a book, uh, excuse me, and someone should write a book about him. Biden thought that it was so unusual for a black man to be articulate and clean, bathes, that it's so unusual someone should write a book about that African American because there's such a standout in the community. That's what Richie was referencing. He was pointing out the racism of Joe Biden perpetrate that racist comments. You know? See, you just can't even admit that you didn't know that. I know what Biden... No, you didn't. I gave you, I gave you four opportunities. I gave you three or four opportunities to mention Biden, and you didn't. Now you're trying to pretend... Oh, yes, I knew that. You didn't know squat, or when I... I gave you three at least opportunities to get out of your stupid attack, and you didn't mention Biden once. Now, now you're lying. That's it. I believe he was talking to Clinton, by the way, at the time too. And I think Clinton also said another like. No, no, now, now you got no, you got your other thing, you got your things mixed up. That uh, that was that was Ted Kent. No, that was. That, you're not going to get out of it that easily. I feel I feel like I'm uh, I feel like I'm Samuel L. Jackson in the apartment at the beginning of Pulp Fiction with the guy on the guy on the couch trying to uh, trying to uh, relate and bond with Jules. No, 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 no. That's a whole other incident. That's Clinton and Ted Kennedy. You, you called somebody a racist for something they made. Sophisticated, informed people in this listening audience knew exactly what that articulate clean reference was. You're just not as informed as you think you are. Listen, I didn't call Richie a racist. I love Richie, actually. No, you did call him a racist. You just did it in a little more subtle way. If you were, if you were, if you were a man... You would say, you know what? I I didn't know that. I I'm sorry. I, I I understand the reference now, but you're not man enough to do it. What I'm saying is, you don't you don't continue that path because someone he wasn't that was that was political commentary of Joe Joe Brandon, and you just you just don't have it in you to say, you know what? I didn't know that. I I was wrong. I I apologize. I apologize to you. Give me a break. Well, you call someone a racist. You you, you imply you inferred you inferred that he was a racist uh, to thousands upon thousands of people over the course of the next twenty four hours. Over a hundred thousand will have heard you refer to him and as a as a racist, and you just can't say I didn't I didn't know that Biden made such a racist comment into your repeat show on that and when he said that you said what what you you don't even know your reaction brian i knew my re i knew exactly what he meant i was emphasizing it i i i i thought that everyone in this audience and i guess you're the exception knew exactly what that reference was and you didn't know it or the three three four times i gave you an opportunity to say biden you didn't I said Biden. I didn't. I didn't know the reference. But I even okay. Now finally, he didn't know the reference. Okay, now you're you're part of the way there. You didn't know the reference. Now you do. Now knowing. Now that you know the re Now that you know the reference, will you retract your implication that Richie is a racist? And he, he, will you do that? I didn't say Richie. I didn't say. Listen. 
You don't. You even said, I don't want to throw him under the bus. You know, you were, you know, could you, please. But, and maybe you should explain to your, maybe you should explain to your daughter what the reference was so she'll understand. By the way, you know what my daughter also, like, goes, why does this guy talk about, like, colored people, you know, callers of color, please call in. And I'm like, you know, he's trying to attract. And by the way, you don't have, I, you know what, you have no opposing callers call into your show. Oh. We got. What are you talking about? I'm talking to one right now. You're opposing me. I'm not a. I'm, I have no. Uh, other than the callers opposing you, you have no opposing callers. You're uh, you're oppo you're opposing me. I'm the only one. You want to retract that statement too? I'm the only one. I said callers. I used multiple. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know what? If I had to understand. You know what? Yeah, I said callers. Really? You re you really think you really think uh, on the stand you would have to have me on, on the stand under the control of a judge, and then you think you could run circles around me? Are you kidding? No. Oh yeah, when I'm not allowed to talk because you would uh, object, object. You you also said. Do it now! Do it now! I'm on the stand. Let, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm on the stand. I'm on the stand. You be Spence. You be Spencer Tracy. You be Tom Cruise. I'll be. I'll be Jack Nicholson. Show me your. Show me what you could do to me on the stand. Let's go. All right. I'm gonna. Uh, I can bring up so many points. You well, are just so bring up one, counselor. Joe Biden. Is it an act or is it not? You're saying, oh well, if he takes this like you know pill, he'll be perfect. And you told many instances. This is an act he's perpetrating upon us. What is it? It's a mix of both. He has good days and bad days. As most people that are suffering from Alzheimer's have. I agree. Uh, now, is this the part where I'm on the stand and you're going to humiliate me in the courtroom? Another one. <laughs> you already, you're already kicking... DeSantis out of the equation until you actually did research on the, someone did your research that it's a caller. You didn't even know this lady. No, I knew. In fact, I told people, I told people on YouTube, I knew in the speech that she gave where I pulled the clip of right before the part I played, she said that she was Jamaican when she joined the Marines. Then why are you making her vice presidential candidate? Because I was, what I was doing with that, and I told everybody on YouTube, so I've got I've got hundreds and hundreds of witnesses. I was what I was doing was, uh, you know, throwing out a line to our black liberals out there who were good to tell me that uh, we they don't want a black vice president. A long term. Now is it now again? Is this the part where you're you're humiliating me on the stand? Or are we getting are we building up to that? Why don't you support Adam West? Adam West, you're talking about the actor who portrayed Batman in the 1960s Batman series opposite Burt Ward? That's Adam West. That's Adam West, who I think passed away. What? Now, I was always a strong supporter of Adam West, and I believe he is the best Batman that we've ever had. Really, is this, is this your best legal work? I'm on the stand. Alan West. I misspoke. Alan West. Oh, you misspoke. Oh, that would, that would be great on court TV. That would have been great on Court TV. They, the lawyers would be laughing at you. Why don't you? Why don't you supporting West? Which West is that? Randy West, the governor who's running for Texas. The governor who's running for Texas. Alan West is not the governor of Texas yet. He is not the governor. You didn't know his name. Now you say the governor who's running for Texas. He's not the governor, Alan West. Running for governor, why aren't you supporting him? I am not supporting Alan West for governor of Texas because President Trump has endorsed the current governor, not Alan West. That's why. Who's the better candidate? Whoever Trump says to vote for is the better candidate in every race. You know what? That's what. That's why your show has become so one-dimensional. You know, you could have done a whole show on like Cruz and that outcome, and you were giving me good insight. You were saying how you thought it was politically you know, corrupted, and then you just want to talk... Now, now in, this, in this exchange we had, do you think this was like you were Tom Cruise and, and I broke down like Jack Nicholson on the stand and A Few Good Men? 
Is this, is this, did your fantasy happen? I mean, who, who filleted who on the witness stand? I think I, I think I made a fool out of you, counselor. Adam West. Adam West, governor. Yeah, my goodness. You asked me about why I'm not supporting the original Batman? You do. This is the thing you, listen, I, you know. I'll leave this out up to the callers. You, 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 how many things you say that are inaccurate and wrong and people called you out on it? Yeah, but you told me, you told me before this last part of the conversation that if you had me on the witness stand, you would humiliate me. I'm on the stand and I humiliated you with all your counselor skills. You know what? You, this is what you are. You're just like, if Trump told you to jump off a bridge, I think you might do it. Ah, you think I'm suicidal? You think I'm suicidal is what you think. You know, if Trump tells you anything, I'm just being figurative here, not literal. You know, that's where you, you, you know, that's what's so frustrating about your show now. It's all like, if Trump tells me this, I do this. Well, what has Trump said or done that would be the equivalent of asking me to jump off a bridge to my death? No, no, no. I, I asked you a question. I, we're beyond the, the, uh, the witness stand. I've, I've already shown who is the best lawyer. The self-taught, the self-taught lawyer, myself, not you, when it comes to uh, witnesses. I mean, I'm a witness that just filleted the, the, the lawyer while I was on the stand, asking me if I approve of, why don't I support Adam West, the original Batman? Me. What was your question? Give me, you, you said... That if President Trump asked me to jump off a bridge to my death, you think I would do it? What has President Trump asked those of us in the MAGA movement to do that is the equivalent of suicide? Drink bleach. He never said drink bleach. Something he actually said. Now, now, I got to run for a break. Oh, now he's making things up again. One opening on the board at one triple eight. Go came one. We'll be right back after this break. This is Lori Kane, and I want to tell you about Bright Dental Care. Oh my I goodness! I had a lot of work done, and I avoided going <laughs> to the dentist for a lot of years because I was afraid of the cost. But I went to Brighton Dental for my treatment. I'm glad I told you guys that about her, uh, knowing she was Jamaican when she went in the Marines, because you were my my witnesses. <laughs> Hear those sirens? Just like they gave me. Prices are so reasonable. Where? You don't have to worry about the cost. Mm. So call Brighton Dental today. At PC police, I guess. 922-4633. That's 954-922-4633. You can visit them at brightondental.com and tell them Maury Kane sent you. This is Brian Craig. I've been telling you about the great deals and incredible customer service at Friendly Tire on both new tires and used tires. One of our listeners, Antonio, went to Friendly Tire and called to share with us his experience of buying used tires at Friendly Tire in Margate. Good morning, you're on the radio. Hey, yes, Brian. I want to give you a quick testimony about the tire. What are you sorry about? That call was good. Steve Kane show. Yep, hold on. The day to Greg. What's your name? Antonio. Oh, hi, Antonio. Hey, I'm glad we can save you and your family lots of money on tires and friendly tires. I like how he said, if I had you on the stand, I'd humiliate you. Why do you not support Adam West? I love it. I love it. Mike, a call right now. 954-977-9445. 954-977-9445. And Mike will give you a quote right over the phone. 954-977-9445. I know. My alma mater, Trump University. All right, we are back. 21 minutes after the hour. I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show. On the radio since 1977, we have a full board of calls. Um, I'm going to take the calls in the order in which they were received. All the calls are screenless. I have no idea who is on hold. So uh, let's go. You're on the radio. Good morning. Good morning, Brian. It's Jeff from Maine. Hey, Jeff. What's up? Hey, that Greg Caller was off the chart. He was like a thirteen-year-old that you can't win an argument with. You know what, Keenan? Oh, I think I won. I think I won that argument several times over. 
hands, hands down. It's like with a teenager. When you confront them with the truth, when they lie, they don't admit it, and they still sit there and lie with you. No, I think it's different than a teenager. I mean, do you think Greg's feeling good right now, or do you think he feels embarrassed? You know, when he said, if I had you on the witness stand, I could humiliate you, I put myself on the stand, and, and the first question from the attorney was, why do you not support Adam West, the original Batman from the 1966 television series with Burt Ward? I mean, you know, that was, it was over at that point. And, um, By far the best Batman. I'm a strong supporter of Adam West. Right. <laughs> uh, and um, I think that Trump is going to affect 2022 <clears throat> coming up elections next year because this is just a sign of the time that people are fed up. Even the Democrats are. They know we're going down Wesley, the wrong road. Wesley, Super Chat. We're Thank not you. Heading Good in morning, right Brian. Let's go ahead. Everybody's well, upset. <clears throat> Yeah. Did you see yesterday Governor DeSantis referred to the Biden administration as the Brandon administration? And you know that's going to pick up. Joe Brandon, the Brandon administration. Oh, man. Yep. <clears throat> and, you know, America is at a, it's always at a, you know, swing. it swings left for a while and right. And we swung so far left, I didn't think yes, we were going to come back. Wesley for that. But now that after <clears throat> what happened the third, it, you know, things are looking good. I know, and you were, remember you called me earlier in the week or the end of last week, and you're like, I don't know about Virginia, and I said, be positive, be positive, none of that defeat us, and look what happened. What do you think about the new face of the Republican Party? Lieutenant Governor of Virginia, African-American woman, let me play this clip. This is, this is, um, this is Winsome Sears, and what do you think was accomplished in that call? I, 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 uh, I, I don't know. It, to me, it, it, it would just... Well, no. He, he called in and he, he uh, made a reference that Richie's a racist over something that he said about uh, Lieutenant Governor Sears of Virginia about being articulate and clean. And then I pointed out a great example of some of the hardcore in the bone racism of Joe Biden. I think a lot was accomplished. I think another thing that was accomplished uh, in that call was showing how yesterday has just, just has the Democrats in a, in a state of panic, confusion, and, and just bizarre behavior. They're in a total meltdown. I think a lot was accomplished in that call on top of it being entertaining. Yeah, but we, we, uh, we already know that we already. All right. So what should I have done? What should I, what should I have done when he called in and called Richie and when he called in and inferred that Richie was a racist, what should I have done? Part. Oh, you didn't hear the call. Okay, well, maybe if you heard the beginning. No. Screen back and forth. You knew he was meant Alan West, and you said Adam West. The other day when you were talking about... Uh uh, excuse, hold on a second. Okay, oh, hold on a second here. Greg said... No, no hold on, Joellen. You're, 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 listen, this, you, this is my profession that I have done my... I've been doing this since I was like 19 years old, okay? And so you're basically questioning my capabilities in what I have been doing my entire adult life. Okay, so I think I should be able to defend my professional credentials here. This Adam West, this Adam West thing, okay? He said to me that if I had you on the witness stand, I would humiliate you. I said, I'm on the witness stand, you're the lawyer, let's go. And, he, and his first question was, why do you not support Adam West? What should I have done as a radio talk show host with that? Uh, you mean Alan West? That's what I would. Ah, see, that's why I'm. That's why I'm a radio talk show host, and you're not. No, what I did was that was everybody in this audience except Greg knew he meant Alan West, right? But he was just bragging about his incredible skills as an attorney, and here I am with just a degree from Trump University. And, uh, I tr and I and I told him before, I said, if I were on the witness stand, I'd be humiliating you. And then boom, right then and there, I did it. I was a humiliation. I humiliated him with that. He was embarrassed by that. I didn't hear him bragging about his... Um, uh, oh, yeah. Well, maybe maybe before you criticize what I'm doing, Joellen, you should listen to the whole context and the whole conversation. I, I heard that. I heard the whole conversation. No, you said two part. You said two things. You said two things that you didn't hear. You I heard him talking about um, about um, Richie. I did not hear that part. And then you said you didn't hear the part where he said, "If I had you on the witness stand, I'd humiliate you." 
Okay, so I wasn't bragging. It's, it's, and, and when you spoke to, about Alec Baldwin talking to about his wife and saying that, uh, say shut up, he never said the word shut up. Shut up is a very strong word. He said shh or I'll hand. Let me tell you something. If I if I am on if I am on uh, television or anywhere and I or in public and I go shh to my wife, that's saying shut up. So, uh, well, right. you know, okay. Anyways, I, I still love you, Brian, but I, you know. What, what do you, what do you think? What do you think the purpose of what we do here is? What do you think the purpose of of this show is? Uh, to have dialogue back and forth. Well, the purposes are many. The purposes are many. This is the longest running radio show in the state of Florida, the Steve Kane Show, on the radio since 1977. And I have been a part of it most of that time, okay? This show is, well, thank you very much. But, uh, uh, you know, this show is very sophisticated political commentary and also a lot of black humor. And one of the things that make this show good is that it's not just news and and information. Buck Sexton and Clay Aiken can go through all the headlines. We do it in a very entertaining way. Steve Kane and I do something that everyone else claims to do, but they don't do. We take calls screenless, and when people are criticizing us, you notice those calls are going on longer than ever, like this call with you right now, or Greg. We take screenless calls, and we are open to all criticism and disagreement live on the air. No one else does that, and it, we do it in an informative and entertaining way, and I, there was a lot of very sophisticated political conservative points I made in that conversation with Greg too. You just, you know, didn't hear the whole call and you're not sophisticated enough to pick up on it. But sometimes, you know, with Greg, it's, it's a little much, but I, uh-huh. have a great, you know, have a great day. I still love listening to you. Well, I'm glad. Yeah. All right, Joellen. Pre- appreciate it. Listen, there's one opening on the board where Joellen was. So if you're on hold, stand by. We'll take our break for the bottom of the hour and be right back. My name is Tom Laporta, the owner of Laporta Contracting, Roofing and Restoration. We have been in... Saying shh to your wife in public is in, or even in private is saying shut up. Joellen's a nice lady, but she's uh, not a brilliant thinker. Yeah, you know what I mean? Hurricane season is upon us. If you have noticed any water stains on your ceiling, or if your roof is older than 15 years, you will want to call us to come out and evaluate your roof. Our services run from minor repairs to complete new roof systems. We install every See, kind of roof. I, I'm, I'm not going to give away the Colonel's secret recipe that Steve taught me on how to do this. But sometimes, you know, you want to try to trigger and trick liberals to call in. And I'll throw out things all the time to, um, hold on, let me hit the next commercial. Where a liberal feels they got an opportunity to get me. So that when they call in, 954-939-1500. So you've been told you need a health test. What are you going to have to pay? Health test can be very expensive. If you go to your doctor's office or one of the big labs, it can cost you hundreds of dollars. Sometimes I haven't had lab tests because of the cost. Then I discovered any lab test now of Coral Springs. Any lab test now of Coral Springs goal is to get you all the lab tests you need, save you money, and get you in and out. Robert, let me tell you. If I, if I said shh to my wife, she'd kick my butt. Okay, that's shut up. Just a fraction of the price the big labs or your doctor's office. In fact, I think it's worse. It's worse. Any lab test now of Coral Springs is located on the southeast corner of University and Ramblewood near the Coral Square Mall. Any lab test now of Coral Springs. Private and affordable lab testing. Nine five four nine zero. Exactly. Thank you, Eric. <clears throat> Well, what we call them in the biz are hooks. 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 I learned how to do this from Steve. Steve taught me everything I know about doing talk radio. Call toll-free 
All right, back to our phones. You're on the radio. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Louise from Boca Raton. <clears throat> yes, Louise. Now, I am a staunch Trump supporter. There's a butt coming. But I have to say, in that, defense that, that, that. of Greg, too. Oh, my goodness. Don't let the poor person finish what they're saying. And it is becoming one-dimensional. You do not allow a Democrat to talk because you just talk them down. You shout at them. You don't even let them finish what they're saying. And listening to the show of late, it's like preaching to the choir. If everybody is a Republican, how interesting can that be? I mean, you don't give them a chance. You don't give anybody a chance, and you can't accept criticism. And that's my, what I, I'm so angry about. Well, you're criticizing me now. And, I keep, and I'm keeping you on the air. Notice, any time a Democrat tries to get their view out, what's the difference? I belong to several current events groups. Oh, I remember. Oh, yeah, you got a personal beef with me. I remember. You're the you're the you're the mask lady. You're the mask lady. I remember you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now. Not wear a mask. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's go back. Now, I let you go on in your reprimand of me on the air, which and of course you didn't get to what the root issue was. You and I had a you and I had a conversation about our two. About about six months ago, that you're still pissed off about the subject. No, I'm no, I am putting context to the conversation. See, your beef isn't with uh, how the Greg Two call went. Your beef, no, it's not. You're just not self. Wait a minute, you're not letting me finish. You said I don't let people finish their thought. You're talking over me. You really need to call Dr. Lamaski on her show Saturday at eleven because you need some therapy. You because you do. Well, she is my therapist. She is my therapist. Here, here's the thing. Here's the. This is your beef. Your beef isn't the 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 discussion with Greg too. You and I. You no. That's how you're processing. You had a couple calls six months ago or so with me about the masks, and it didn't go the way you wanted it to go, and you've been pissed ever since. It has nothing to. Do. Oh yeah. It has, no, it has everything to do with that mask call six months ago, Louise. Twisted around it has nothing to do with that. Who cares if you don't want to wear a mask? If I feel safer, that's my business. Oh, I agree, but you wanted to, but, but, but this is what's happened. You say I can't handle criticism. You're the third call in a row that has questioned my professionalism and my technique and my lifelong profession of talk radio. You give the other party a chance to talk and state their opinion. That's what makes it interesting. Not if everybody who calls in is a Republican. It's uh -huh. very boring. Well, you seem to like the show a lot because you follow it very closely. Lately it's getting to me because you don't get given the opposition to change. What are you talking about? You're, you're the third person in a row to reprimand me and raise their voice at me on the air. So I don't know what you're talking about. Because you don't even change your ways. You don't let a Democrat talk. Let them you're talking. You're talking. Greg was talking. Okay. All right. Okay. It's getting so damn boring, I can't even bear it anymore. Goodbye. Goodbye, my pretty, and your little dog, too. <laughs> Good morning. You're on the radio. Hello, Brian. How are you? I'm doing all right. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Sandra, and I'm calling from Indiana, and I will talk very calmly. Okay. I have several things to say. When, when uh, he said uh, about being clean, how I took that was that the Democrats will not be able to find anything on her like they try to do to any um, Republican or conservative. That was a Wizard of Oz reference. And your little dog, fast. too. I listened to her acceptance speech, and it was wonderful. She did say she was Jamaican when she joined the military. And as far as Greg, too, making the comment that about you following Trump and saying that you would 
go to the edge of the cliff and fall off if he said so? I would like to pose this question to all of these leftist liberals that if Joe Biden and Dr. Fauci came on the news on national television and said, you no longer have to wear your mask and you no longer have to get the vaccine, how many of these leftist liberals would drop their... Well, I don't know. I don't know, because I see a lot of people... I see a lot of Democrats driving alone in cars with masks on in their cars, and it's become a part of their thing. But, you know, listen, so far as the, you know, the, the, the conversations I've had with the three previous callers, um, the best, the, uh, we are very open to criticism of anything. And so far as it, what Greg said is if Trump told you to jump off a bridge to your death, you would do it. President Trump has not asked anyone to do anything other than better themselves and better this country. He's not asked anyone to do anything that is dangerous. Joe Biden, on the other hand, there's 600 Americans held hostage right now in Afghanistan by the Taliban. Uh, what about these American hostages in Haiti that are there? We, I, I had a story earlier that uh, the Border Patrol found a pickup with a four-year-old girl, an eight-year-old girl, and a 17-year-old girl hidden in the bed crossing the border under plywood that they were bringing over here, obviously, for sex slavery. So what Biden and Harris are doing each and every day is putting people's lives at risk and maybe even getting people killed over in Afghanistan and in Haiti. So uh, President Trump hasn't asked anyone to do anything like that. Hey, listen, thanks, thanks for the call. Good morning. You're on the radio. What's your name? Good morning, Brian. Hey, Andrea, what's up? Oh, my God, I would so like to take a crack at this. I would so like to take a crack at defending you against Greg Taylor. If you would let me. Let's go. We're here. Mr. Craig, how long have you been on the radio? Oh, 30 years. In 30 years, would you say that you've spoken to at least a few million? Well, I don't know. Tens of thousands. I don't know about millions. I mean, you mean like on the phone? Or you mean listeners? On the phone, I don't know. Tens of thousands over the years, Steve Kane and I, absolutely. In those tens of thousands, how many callers would you say you've banned? Been banned from the show in 30 years? 10 to 15. Yeah. Maybe 20 at the most, yeah. Okay. So, basically, how many... Callers, do you think that you speak to or have spoken to over the years that are liberal? Oh, gosh. Thousands. Thousands. It's, you know, not, yeah. Well, you know, see, this, this is the deal, okay, about liberals not calling as much. This, this program is the most difficult program to call in America. I understand that because you're going to be questioned. And I hold conservatives to the same standard I hold liberals to. I, you know, I put their feet to the fire. You know, so we don't get as many liberal calls as I would necessarily like. It doesn't mean they're not listening. It's, this is a very, ch liberalism really is, it's difficult to, in a debate, to win if you're a liberal. You know, I know Ben Shapiro, he likes to go to colleges and debate children, liberal children. He's like uh, Kramer in that karate episode where he was in the, fighting the five-year-olds. Do you remember that? You know, you know I, I don't see Ben Shapiro taking on grown, grown men and women like he does children in the colleges. But this is a very difficult show to call. I get it. I get it. That's why we don't hear from them as much as I'd like. Does every call end in a hang up? Even, even if I'm talking to my wife, the call of Vinci, I won't tell it a shh like uh, Alec Baldwin to his fake Latina wife. But uh, yeah, every call ends in a hang up. So then this show is essentially based on political discourse, which is protected by the First Amendment. You have not had any FCC strikes. You have not suffered any violations in all the years that you and Steve have... Well, I, I, I've been violated by people, even including physically. But yeah, but yeah, but yeah, I know the, not, the kind of violations you're talking about now. No, well, you know, listen, we, we, look, there was a guy that called in the other day. The, the, remember the fake liberal guy? from Connecticut that was a gun owner that didn't know what kind of bullets his 12-gauge shotgun. I asked, what kind of shells does your 12-gauge shotgun take? He didn't know what kind of bullets his 9-millimeter Beretta took. 
You know, I mean, you know, we get we get a lot of liberals calling in that you think are conservatives. Like that last lady, the 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 mask lady, she's as uh, she's as conservative as Kamala. So then, it's essentially, your job to weed out people misinforming the public on the airways, essentially. Yeah, 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 yeah. While all of these things are First Amendment rights, you are not in violation of any. Well, okay, all right, Andrea. I don't. I quite. Uh, hey, listen. I'm gonna. I'm gonna move on. But I appreciate the support, Andrea. Take care. Thanks so much. Good morning. You're on the radio. <clears throat> Good morning. Got one thing to say. I'm sorry you're going through this this morning. Good Lord. Those <clears throat> Democrats are wild. They get lost there. They, you know, they're going to be raging. Yeah. Acting like it. That's all I got to say about the matter. Well, that's, you know, that's the symbol of their party is a donkey, so. Yeah, all right, take care. Good morning, you're on the radio. Good morning, you're on the air. Hey, North Carolina, what's up? Hey, I, I just tuned in, I just got up. But anyway, I oh. come part with, what was, his, what was his name, Richie? Or, or? Well, then you didn't just get up. That was like an hour. Richie called over an hour ago. Yeah, well, anyway, when, he, when you put him on, the, when he put you on the stand. Oh, that was Greg, Greg too, yes. He, yeah, when when you were on the stand, and then the first thing that came to my mind with that Jack Nicholson movie, your line should have been, yeah, "You can't handle the truth." <laughs> oh, I thought my own unique line was 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 better placed when he, yeah. Well, he set himself up. He said, "If I had you on the witness stand, I would humiliate you." So I put myself on the stand, and the first question was, "Why do you not support Adam West?" I mean, what am I supposed? Of course, I'm going to make fun of that. It should, you know. And it, and it even took him 30 seconds to realize that I was making fun of him. That's all. Anyway, I like, I like, I like to watch all these uh, leftists now. They're all going crazy. I like to watch the bobbleheads on them other stations pop up and down. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Hey, North Carolina, take care. Good morning. You're on the radio. Hey, David. Hey, Rabbi. What's up? Hey, part of being a, an attorney... And standing in front of a jury with someone on the stand is not to get flustered, you know. Exactly. The job of the person on the not the job of the person on the stand to <clears throat> help the lawyer along, you know. And and that that was so telling of this guy's skill. And and it was brilliant that you went ahead because I, frankly I didn't know he was referring to Alan West. I thought what happened to Adam West? Did I missed some news report. Yeah. I thought I was like I was like what what Adam West was. So, you know, that, that, that was that. So that was just brilliant. And, and uh, you know, he, he just showed himself. It was so clear. I mean, could have gone another way, but he just went, he went south. Well, these are risks that we take. You know, when, you, when you're live on the air and you're taking calls screenless, people can say and ask you anything that is permitted under the, you know, law, laws. Uh, it's a risky... It, it, Steve and I do a risky thing here. I, I don't think people realize this is very risky. This is like what we're doing is like, uh, you know, these stand-up comics with hecklers. You know, these callers are hecklers. <clears throat> I'll say this also, when people say you cut off liberals, you, you don't cut off... You know, I, I call in, I'm not a liberal, um, but it's not that you cut me off or cut other people off. You, you help the conversation along, because, you know, given our druthers, you know, we can be boring and a lot of... Well, here's, here's the thing about the... Here's the thing about the... Um, on radio, just from a technical standpoint... Only one piece of audio can be heard at a time. If there are two things at the same time going on, it's mud. Let me give you an example. I'll, I'll, play, um, I'll play a commercial while, uh, while I'm talking, and, and, you can't, and if you're listening on the radio, you can't, you can't hear anything that I'm saying. You can't hear what that's saying, and that's just the way it is. So what, what happens a lot of times with callers is they don't stop talking when the other person's talking. This is not like having, just from a technical aspect. The other thing is, as a host of a show, it's what you said, Rabbi, you've got to control the direction of the conversation so that it's interesting and entertaining to listen. You know. I think, um, we, you know, we always talk about who's in charge at the White House. And we've always been speculating and trying to figure out, you know, is it Pelosi, is it this, is that? You know, um, I, I, during the G7, not to go backwards, but, it, but it's very telling, okay, and I've been really thinking about it, um, 
they had all the they showed all the spouses of all the world leaders going on some tour or some little trip that you know get the spouses out on a bus to show them something. And the only one that didn't go was Dr. Jill Biden. Okay, and and I thought about well, why didn't she go? And I, I can't. It's two reasons. One that she really needs to be with her husband because otherwise we'll get lost health-wise and wouldn't know, you know, what to do. Um, and number two is, I don't think she considers herself the status of a spouse that would be too low for her to join all the other wives. And, and I think that's telling that, that I think she's got a big role to play in what's going on. In this well, world. she's just as scummy as he is. She raised Hunter. Look how that turned out. And look how she allowed him to be used by her husband. You know, I know she looks like a librarian, but she's not. She's put up with this guy. For how long have they been married? Hey, Rabbi, I got to run for our last break of the second hour. Steve Kane will be joining us after the break. Don't go anywhere. Careful with diabetes. Did you know there's a 25% chance that you will develop a foot ulcer at some point in your life? And foot ulcers, when you have diabetes, can lead to severe health consequences, up to and including amputation. Now, Medicare recognizes the importance of preventative foot care and has provided coverage for those of you who are at-risk patients. I'm One calling the radio show. What's the problem? Authority. These are my voice messages. I don't understand. little or no cost, you can receive your very own uh, pair of therapeutic shoes made specially for diabetics. You're probably not aware... But as a diabetic Medicare recipient, you are entitled to... I'm playing my voicemail messages that I just got this morning. With three custom hey, Brian. Here. These this are not is the guy in Portland. You are the great. Thank you. These are name brand Good shoes. show. They're stylish. They'll provide you with the extra width and extra depth to stop diabetes. Those are my voice messages I just got. <laughs> All right, and Scott from Cut My Kilowatts, call him. No matter where you are in the state of Florida, he can talk to you and handle your radiant barrier and reduce your electric bill year-round. And right now is a great time to call Scott at Cut My Kilowatts because the weather's a little cooler. His, his crew can work in the attic longer and get the work done faster. And it's because in the heat of the summer, it's 135 degrees up there. Now it's a little easier for them to work up there. He saves a ton of money on labor cost, and he passes that savings on to you. No matter where you are in the state of Florida, Scott from Cut My Kilowatts can help. This number rings directly to his cell phone, 954-939-1500. 954-939-1500. All right, just got word Steve Kane is here. Good morning, Steve. Well, I got word that you were here, and now you're not, so I Okay. <laughs> Steve is not there. Okay. All right. Let's take some calls. Good morning. You're on the radio. Hello, Brian. Y yes. Hi. This is Sue from Michigan. Hey. What's up, Michigan? Hey. Hi, Brian. Um, I'm I'm gonna not try and get emotional here, but um, I think people forget the fact that there's folks like me out here that. I have been alone now, basically, for a couple of years, pretty much in lockdown. And you and this audience, the chat room, 
<clears throat> I'm kind of tapping the nose, you know. Um, I can hear from the outside world. I can talk with folks on the chat. And I think people forget that. And it's not a matter of trying to silence liberals or not take their calls. But it's people like me who literally listen every single day. And it is, it is a form of kind of um, therapy for me because I can hear the outside world. Yeah, well, that's, well that's, uh, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. You know, so far as liberals calling or not calling, we, we've, heard, we've heard from liberals on the phone today. I understand we don't have as many calling in as maybe Steve and I would like, but that's not on us, that's on them. And, and this whole idea that, that, that Greg says, well, they don't call, or the, uh, or the mask lady, they, they don't call in because they can't make their points. That's not the case. They can't, the reason they don't call in is because they cannot win the argument. Okay, and I know it's difficult. This is the most difficult program in America to call. We challenge everyone, conservatives too. Joellen in Fort Lauderdale is a big Trump supporter. She's MAGA through and through like me, and she was, you know, we were going at it. We, you know, we, we go back and forth with anyone and everything, regardless of politics, but liberalism does not hold up with a, with a seasoned conservative argument. And, and that's just the way it is. I would love to, you know, I remember somebody, uh, people ask me sometimes, if you were, fill, I used to get this a lot, if you were filling in with Rush, for Rush one day, what would you do? I would say, I'd go on the air and I would, I would say, the phones are open only to black Democrats today. And I would talk to nothing but black liberal Democrats for an entire day on the Rush, if I were doing a nationally syndicated show, you know? And, but this is a difficult show to call. I get it. But it's not, it's not our fault that they're not calling in those numbers. They're not calling in because how do you defend Biden and Kamala? They just have three girls, four, eight, a four-year-old girl, an eight-year-old girl, and a 17-year-old girl were saved uh, from, from sex traffickers, sex slavers at the southern border yesterday. How do you call in and defend the Biden policy when they brought sex trafficking and sex slavery back to America? That's one of the things that made me so emotional this morning is I am a survivor and nobody is talking, nobody's talking about the children. Nobody is doing a doggone thing about these horrendous, horrific things that most folks can't even conceive and it's just an open free for all and we're not supposed to talk about it. What what ha what 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 happened? What happened to you? You're you're a survivor of what? Um, child childhood abuse. Childhood abuse. Oh my goodness! I'm so sorry. And so the children, Brian, we need to do something about these traffickers, and nobody's talking. Well, President Trump did it. That's why. That's why. Pre that. Well, President Trump did it, and that's why he was separating the kids and the adults at the border because they were a lot of them are sex slavers. Like this, this there was a man driving this uh, Dodge Ram across the border with a four-year-old girl, an eighteen-year-old girl, and a seventeen-year-old girl hidden under plywood in the bed. What was it? He was a single man. What were what were those girls going? Where was he taking them? You don't want to know. Well, we have to, it's, it is, I, I, I know it's upsetting, but people need to know because this is what Biden and Kamala Harris have done. And they're just letting it go. I'm so sorry to get emotional, but this ruins people. I mean, just totally. If them children even survive, people don't understand how bad they, let's be honest, evil. Let's call it what it is. And it's bad. And you know what? I I don't know how you could possibly defend Bagra. I mean, let, where do you want... Because, because uh, I, I'll tell you why. Because Joe Biden... You know, this whole thing with Greg started out... He didn't, he, he didn't know about uh, Biden talking about Obama being clean and articulate. Bi Joe Biden believes black and brown people are less than 
human than he is. He's more human than they are. He's a racist. He's an old racist. And when he sees uh, black and brown people, he doesn't see people that are equal to him as a human being. He doesn't give a damn. I mean, look how he treats his son. You know, the, the worst thing you can do, I, I've had people in my family that have had um, uh, alcohol abuse issues. I mean, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about some guy who's drinking at lunchtime with a couple martinis. I, I, I had a couple of uncles that would drink food coloring, that would drink anything, you know, that had alcohol in it. And the worst thing that you can not, not I haven't had anybody in my circle that's had hardcore drug problems, but I've been around some hardcore major alcoholics, not with no social skill. No, they weren't like they went to work and then were drunk every night. I'm talking about wino type. The worst thing you can give to someone who is an addict is money. You, 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 you know, I started out in radio with this guy who used to be a, a street hustling um, homeless prostitute, and, and he was a crackhead. And he would tell me he worked in these daily labor pools for 35 bucks a day, and all he thought, thought about was rock, that crack rock. And he'd get his 35... That's right. And, and here you have, here you have uh, 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 Joe Biden giving uh, a drug addict millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. You know, what kind of man does that? Collecting 10%, remember. 10%? Please. 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 That's what that's what he get that's what Hunter gets maybe. But but you know, what kind of man does that to their son? I can't answer that. You know, I'm on the other end. I am what the product of that is so I can't answer how a human being can hurt another human being like that. I, I can't get it through my head, and I... Well, as, as a sociopath, uh, you know, you, 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 um, you know, you, I used to read up a lot on, you know, when I was a kid in, in high school, serial killers, you know, um, Bundy, or even more recently, BTK, and anytime you, you know, uh, Ted Bundy, uh, there's a great, sp uh, the Bundy tapes on Netflix, there are uh, hours and hours of interviews with Ted Bundy when he was on death row here in Florida, Ted Bundy said that it was the women's fault that he killed them because they got into his car willingly. You know, so so you're dealing with sociopaths. And we have a lot of sociopaths in the Democrat Party that are running the country. All right. Can I ask a question? Real quick, because I got a break. Okay. I'm a little bit older, but I do not remember people being such a percentage of what I feel are sociopaths. Well, how, how long have you been a conservative? How long have you been a conservative? Uh, I think forever. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay, because I was going to say, if you used to be a liberal, maybe they, you just didn't realize it. Well, the, re okay, the reason that you see it more than you used to is because for the first time, since Trump came down the escalator, conservatives are organized activi activists against them. We would have people like Pat Roberts in the Christian Coalition, but that was fringe. Now, MAGA is 81 million strong or more. So, we, you know, so for the first time, it started when Trump came down the escalator in 2015, the left have an activist opposition in the conservative movement in numbers they've never experienced before, and they're babies and they can't handle people that disagree with them. That's why it seems worse. They've always been this way. But I, I gotta take a break, all right? I'm already late, Thank, thanks for the call. All right, I think we're gonna have Steve after the break. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show on the radio since 1977. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with your calls. Got you covered. AM 1470, FM 95.3, 96.9. South Florida's FM Money Talk Radio Network. WWNN, Pompano Beach. <laughs> Steve King. Radio listeners love Champagne Automotive Repair in Boca. I went over to a Champagne Automotive and I gotta say that this man is the most fair mechanic I have dealt with in my entire life. We took a car over there that, that was not being used yet. You know, it belonged to my 90 year old dad. Everybody I had taken it to before was charging an astronomical amount of money. Yeah, it's Brian. I, I just I don't hear him on the. Well, we can do it. He can do it on the phone.
Is it? I'm not hearing anything yet. Oh, I'm hearing a little something. Okay, we're set. It's it's working. It's working. Okay, thanks. Bye. Well, Larry, hold on a second. Callers is not the same as a guest. Callers and guests are different things. Like, if you, did you hear my Mark Meadows interview from the day before yesterday? I asked him a question. He answers it, long answers. A caller is not the same as a guest. <clears throat> See, what these callers like Greg are trying to do is attempting to humiliate me. So it's kind of like a duel is what's going on with these callers. It's not the same as a guest, you know. They're the coyote and we're the roadrunner, but they're trying to attempt to humiliate us. And it's happened. I've been humiliated before. I don't know. People, you know, that's why you got to give me likes. There, people leave uh, thumbs down before the show even starts. Like an hour before the show, they'll be thumbs down. I mean, that, the show hasn't even started yet. I am starving. I got so tied up with work yesterday, I didn't eat dinner. And Kat, Kathy was going to make me dinner, and it was getting late. I said, God, it's too late to eat like a meal. So, <clears throat> so I'm going to go home and chew on my arm. <clears throat> yes, a battle of wits. Correct. They just don't have any wits about them. So, All right, six minutes after the hour, the third hour has begun. It's the Steve Kane Show. I'm Brian. We have Steve Kane with us. Hey, Steve. That yeah, we got you. It sounds like it sounds like Steve Kane. Huh? I got to tell you, I'm so excited. The last hour, mm -hmm. I've been listening to the show, and uh, you were you, you're terrific. You're great. Well, I've basically had a, I basically have had a lifetime apprenticeship with. Uh, Steve. You know, people don't know this. I don't want to get too too sidetracked on it. But, Say one yeah. thing and then I'll... I'll, I'll... Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> for the audience who's been listening for the last <laughs> hour, the one thing you'll notice with all the complaints that Brian is, cuts people off or whatever that lady was saying. By the way, I, it's she's she must be a never-Trumper or something. Yeah. Uh, what can, no one can tell me she's uh, uh, one of us. <laughs> but... Uh, Oh, you mean Mark? Oh, you're talking about Margaret Hamilton's call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Wicked Witch. Um, you'll notice when we take calls, and this is true of both Brian and I, the calls from hostile callers get two, three, four times the amount of airtime as those very nice folks who agree with us and call in to give us more, you know, support. Uh, that's an important thing to notice. We don't do, we, I wish every call was a hostile caller. They're the best calls. This has been a great hour of radio I've been listening to as I, you know, sit here waiting to go on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you did a great job. Well, now, yeah, a lot of people don't know this. I'll just say real quick, because I want to get to the issues about the uh, new face of the Republican Party, Lieutenant Governor Sears. I want to play that, this clip I pulled of her acceptance. Speech. But when I first started doing this, and I was doing that. I had this week. I had this once a week show that I I had sixteen co-hosts 
on that show. I got 16 people to quit till I got my own show, which is not easy to do to get people to quit a radio show. But it was a three-hour show, and you used to listen to that show every week, all three hours. You, it was when your kids were up in Orlando. You'd go up there every week. And on Mondays, you'd come back with notes telling me what I did wrong and what I should have done and how I could have handled this caller and everything else. You know, this is a it, it, talk radio is an art form, and uh, it, and if you listen to some of the things that passes as talk radio today, you'll you'll understand what I'm what I'm uh, uh, talking about. And we, may, you know, these these callers today that were challenging me. It started with Greg too. You know, we get a lot of liberal callers. It doesn't go the way that they fantasize, like Greg putting me on the witness stand. But uh, you, we make in these in these fights that we have a lot of great political points are made. You just have to listen carefully to pick up on them. But I wanted to play this clip, Steve. I started the show with this, and I think it's a good way to start the last hour. Um, I only heard of her by name, you know, day before yesterday. And the the uh, uh, Winsome Sears, the Lieutenant Governor of Virginia. Yeah, great name, and. Um, and I always love Sears anyway, but she she gave a um, a victory speech. It's eight minutes long, and I just and I watched the whole thing, which is a completely spectacular. But I pulled one clip out of it, and she is incredible. And the liberals and the mainstream media are totally freaked out about her because she is going to be in the Congress someday. She may be the good. Surprise me if you find her uh, in the next election. You know, right? Her front and center fast. Well, when you hear this clip, you'll see. Now, the only the only thing they have going for her, uh, for them, the Democrats about her, is that she is uh, she was born in Jamaica. She's a naturalized U.S. citizen, so uh, sadly she can't be our president. But uh, she can be a senator. She can be in the House. She can even be the governor of Virginia. And um, she is uh, right now. I promise you, the Democrats are investigating her her husband, her parents, even if they're dead, her daughters who were with her, her son-in-laws and their families, they're fishing for something because they want to bring her down. Listen to this clip and you'll see what I mean. She, Winsome uh, Sears, the, lieutenant, the black female lieutenant governor of Virginia, she is a clear and present danger to the entire Democrat narrative right now. Listen, listen. There are some who want to divide us and we must not let that happen. They would like us to believe we are back in 1963 when my father came. We can live where we want, we can eat where we want, we own the water fountains. We have had a black president elected not once but twice and here I am living proof. Black and I have been black all my life. Yeah, so she's talking about the way the world is now. And they, yeah. Oh my gosh. That freaks them out. And I'll tell you, she, you know, her and her husband are both uh, Marines. She commands, a, she had a massive crowd there. And when the chants got going on and on and she wanted to speak, she just made a motion with her hand and the whole room shut up. She's very charismatic, too. And I, and, and it's unfortunate that she's an immigrant because she could. Yeah. No, 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 no. She's going to be traveling with President Trump at the rallies next year. I would guarantee it. Guarantee it. As if she's not running for a uh, a house seat next time around. Even a Senate seat. Well, well, the way that the these governor and lieutenant governors in Virginia. They can only be governor one one term, and then they got to step aside for somebody else. That they can run again, like McAuliffe. So yeah, she's she's um, she's definitely going places, and she she's talking about race as it really truly is in America today, not as not the narrative that the left are pushing. And if yeah, and the and the liberals' reaction yet. Now I, I was watching some of their analysis late in the day yesterday after they the shell shock wore off, and they believe that they lost in Virginia and these other races too because they weren't radical enough on race and other things they think they were yeah that's 
That's our greatest dream. Oh, yeah. They deluded. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. It was it was uh, it was amazing. It was it's just a, and you know the the squad didn't even you know they were congratulating these women yesterday. Of course they left out they left Sears out, but but Sears has them. I the last time a female Republican freaked out the media and the left so much was Sarah Palin. And you think about it, all these people that were saying yesterday that we won in Virginia because white supremacists they voted those white supremacists voted for this black woman. That doesn't even make sense. Why would wh- white supremacists don't vote for black people? And they elected her. So how can they be white supremacists? I don't know. Great day. Day to be alive in America. Huh? Yeah, and I want to tell everybody about the best Christmas gift you can give anyone, and that is a that is something from my pillow. And uh, Mike Lindell, because of the great success he has had and and as a thank you to the Steve Kane listening audience has given us our own MyPillow website MyPillow.com and there are incredible specials if you go to MyPillow.com slash Kane K-A-N-E MyPillow.com slash Kane and use our promo code Kane you will see, see deals and specials that are so low they'll blow your mind away okay the Giza Dream Sheets which I have 100% Giza cotton Buy one set, get a second set free. By the way, the flannel sheets are now available in Giza cotton. They have solids, they have stripes, they have the flannel. And if you only need one set, you can get just one set and get uh, a deal on that too. In fact, the MyPillow 100% Giza cotton dream sheets as low as $49.99 with our promo code Kane. The MyPillow My Slippers, which I also have, 50% off with the promo code Kane. And of course, the mattress topper that I sleep on every night that rid my back of pain in less than an hour, 50% off with our promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. Mike Lindell has been canceled by every retailer out there. He's been thrown off QVC and the Home Shopping Network where he uh, did a lot of business over the years because of his support with Trump. They're trying to cancel him. They've cost him and his company over $70 million in losses, and we're going to uncancel Mike Lindell. And you can do that by buying these great Christmas gifts for uh, those on your Christmas gift giving list with our promo code Kane. You can also take advantage of these deals by phone. 1-800-716-4879. 1-800-716-4879. Promo code Kane. K-A-N-E. Air conservative Doug called me up live on the air to tell me about his experience
HOA Association. He fixed our roof. Not only did he take care of the roof, he took care of the ceiling stains. So, so they removed all the popcorn, they cleaned everything up, they painted, they sealed, inside and out. Everything is beautiful. And I have to tell you... I'm 50. I got all kinds of hair. I got too much hair. I need a haircut. Michael. All right, we're back. I'm Brian. Steve here, of course, 19 minutes after the hour. Well, as bad as the economy um, is going, Steve, there's one area of the economy which uh, it seems to be picking up under Joe Biden. And that, of course, is uh, sadly sex trafficking. Um, I, I had a, oh, I know, it's it, a sex slaver was arrested at the southern border a guy in a Dodge Ram pickup truck crossing uh, the southern border into the United States had in the bed of his pickup truck, hidden under plywood, a four-year-old girl, an eight-year-old girl, and a 17-year-old girl. He's been arrested, charged with human trafficking. I, I don't know how many of these sickos have gotten through, but President Trump ended the sex trafficking, the sex slavery, and I, Biden in our border, border arena. Kamala Harris have brought it back. Where are these women of the view? Are they concerned about this? Mm. I mean, what do, what do Democrats tell themselves? <clears throat> what do they tell themselves, Steve? I mean... So they're, they're in a state of flux now. It's hard to know exactly what they're going to do. I, I, I guess, if I, had to take, if I had to take a guess... It's going to be a major battle between the moderates and the lunatics, uh, and the, the extreme left wingers, and that's fine by us. You know, did did you catch any did you catch any of the um, of the stories from the Kyle Rittenhouse trial yesterday? No. Oh my goodness! Well, they have new video that had been suppressed by the media and law enforcement of Kyle Rittenhouse being attacked. The judge uh, is very pro-defense in this case and just went on. He attacked, um, who's that guy on CNN that was masturbating on the Zoom meeting camera? Um, Tubin, Jeffrey Tubin. He attacked Jeffrey Tubin by name, the judge. He's very, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, if he doesn't get an acquittal, this judge might toss it out. I mean, he's being so hard. Th this new video that uh, came out yesterday of Kyle Rittenhouse being attacked puts things in a whole new perspective for the case, this suppressant. He's the 17-year-old kid that shot the people. No, 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 no. No. That's somebody else. No. He's the 17-year-old kid with the long rifle that shot people. Was it an AR-15 he had? And they, this new video shows that he was one of the guys it shows one of the guys yeah it shows one of the guys he shot attacking him first with a with him with Kyle Rittenhouse on the ground being stomped on by this guy and he shot him when he was stomping on him and uh, it's you know it, he he I, they'll they have a difficult time getting a conviction they may get a hung jury but this judge he may he's the longest serving judge in the state, he doesn't seem to have any future political aspirations. He's ready to do the right thing and retire. It's uh, unbelievable. When they're in the this this is a trial. When the actual trial heats up, it, it's some, you're going to go back to your court TV for a while because it's a it's a trial you want to see. I've never seen a if, if this guy was the judge in the OJ case instead of Ito, he'd have been convicted. He's a he's a no nonsense. When he's he's reprimanding the media like he's doing, it was a. Uh, I learned a lot this week. I, I mean, I I thought it was uh, open and shut, guilty, and I couldn't have been more wrong about Rittenhouse. It was total self defense. If you look at the new video, and that's you know if you, if they had a liberal judge, they probably wouldn't even allow the video of him being attacked. 
which is when it, it's okay to use a weapon in defense of your life. You know, it's it's when you. So he was he was he was under attack. His life was being threatened. You see it in the video, and and he sadly I think did something that was difficult for him was to shoot this guy, but he had to do it because he was gonna he was stomping on him. He killed somebody. He was he was stomping on him like they were stomping on Reginald Denny. What's he supposed to do? Allow the guy to keep stomping on him? I mean, you know, give me a break. And and the defense, I mean, the uh, prosecution was trying to suppress that video and not allow it in court, and. Um, it's there, so I, you, you gotta have a difficult time getting a conviction with um, that out. Play out uh, with uh, what's going on with the getting back to the legislation where they're trying to give away the whole country. I didn't see the whole interview. Um, I saw only a clip, but I heard that Mansion he was on, Mansion was on with Brett Baer last night. I missed the interview. I saw I saw I saw a clip. I didn't. Well, I think you don't see his whole body very often. Uh, there was a shot of it yesterday. It's huge. Yeah, he seems puffy. He see. I don't know if he's always been that way, or not, because I've only seen him over the years, like the shoulders up. I. S <clears throat> no, yeah, he'll call it COVID weight, you know. He, he, but um, from what I understand, uh, Manchin was standing pretty firm against the bill with Brett Baer. I did not see the interview, only a clip that told me nothing. It seems to me that, <clears throat> it seems to me that Manchin was vindicated by this whole thing. Wouldn't you say that? Well, yeah, it's, I think it's what you said, that he was... Yeah, go ahead. No, you said you, it, it, Virginia would decide about the bill, and it looks like it did. Yeah, well, Steve Kane show. it remains to be seen what happens when they Steve don't show. close doors. But uh, Hold on. it's certainly... Well, if you... If, if any of you in the listening audience saw the Mansion interview with Brett Baer in particular, please give us a call because I did miss it. The clip I saw didn't tell me anything. and But I've heard from people that said that they, they were very happy with the way Manchin was talking. So I don't know what he said. Um, so one triple eight go Kane one that's the number. Let us know what happened in that interview because apparently I missed a big piece of news by missing that, that, uh, that interview. All right, let's go to the phones. Good morning, you're on the radio. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, this is David, uh, Royal Palm Beach. Hey. Hey, <clears throat> uh, I was just, hi, hi, it's Steve, Brian. Um, I was just wondering when people were going to catch on that what's gone on over the past year is pretty much exactly <clears throat> what, um, you know, the Russians were doing in 17 and the Nazis were doing in the 30s, you know, the fake prosecution. Fa fa they're false flags is what they're called, false flags with an L. Yeah, and, and you know, I was a Navy officer. I, I've seen this stuff. I've studied it. And, and anybody that doesn't understand what's going on needs to really wake up. These people are psychopaths. I don't know if they've been energized by nuts like um, AOC and those that crowd. But all these people are not. You have to understand they're not doing anything to represent their people. They're they're basically paid larkists, you know, playing a role to get this communist crap going. Mm -hmm. People have to wake up, and they have to start doing something in terms of law enforcement. It's well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. What was your first name again? I'm sorry, David and Royal Palm. You know, one of the things that they're doing is there's a major purge from the military and law enforcement of MAGA. Um, it's being done in large part with the mandates. The mandate, you know, a lot of the people obviously that are standing up against the mandates and leaving the military and law enforcement are MAGA. So that's that's a soft way to get rid of them. And Patriot Purge, Tucker Carlson's thing, he had a MAGA DEA agent who's been fired and arrested, and he was lured to the Capitol by um, a confidential informant of his who we who believe they believe was working for the FBI to purge him as a MAGA guy from the DEA as a federal agent. So there's a, there's a big political purge going on in, in, uh, in the military and in law enforcement right now. And that's, and it's not for a good reason. It's for a very bad reason. Of course it is. And again, you know, I, I've studied this 
stuff is in Steve Asia Kane show. And I, I'm telling you, people have hey, to Barry, wake up. On. If they're having their coffee right now, they need to kind of snap out of that. <laughs> and because we're right now kind of really, actually at this point, over the next six months, <clears> is a break. And I see a good thing right now. Uh, everything, it's very good. But people at this point need to take advantage of it. Well, you know, here, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. These operations, in Tucker Carlson's special, he interviewed a retired CIA guy and a girl who, a uh, young girl who was an army officer who worked in psych ops, going through how this was a psych op operation at the Capitol. And um, she was at the Capitol and she was witnessing it. But anyway, this works far away and overseas in the 70s and 80s where it's far away. The only thing you know going on comes from the liberal media, the AP, Reuters. This happened with thousands of people that have iPhones. And because they pulled this psych ops operation off in the United States, and we have conservative and alternative media sources now, they failed because they've gotten busted. That's why when they tried to do the, the uh, Capital Two thing a few weeks ago, and no one showed up but undercover federal agents, right? Remember that Fe Fed Fest a few weeks back? They, they got busted. They got busted. But, uh, hey, listen, we got, we got to run for a break, but thanks for the call. All right, Steve, it's time to check in with your attorney, Attorney Barry Siegel from the Siegel Law Group. Hey, Barry. Hey, good morning, Brian. Doing great. Doing great. What do you have for us today, Barry? Well, here we are. We're already <clears throat> into the first week of November. We're about uh, three weeks, exactly three weeks away from Thanksgiving, a holiday that, uh, you know, we get to share with our family and give thanks for all the things we have in our life, the people we have in our life, and this may be, for a lot of us, the first Thanksgiving we have uh, in person with family for quite some time. And, uh, you know, so as we're reflecting on our family and the people we love, you know, it's just important to make sure that we don't leave a mess behind, that we take care of the people we love, protect ourselves, protect them, and in less than two weeks, we're going to have our next and final seminar of of this calendar year that's going to be on November 17th, and that's going to be on living trust, on protecting yourself and your family uh, through proper planning. And that's going to be on November 17th at 10 a.m. at the uh, South County Civic Center in Delray Beach, right on John mm -hmm. Road, 10 a.m. And uh, there, uh, for the last one, it got, you know, even though it was a free seminar, it was sold out. It was completely full for both Medicaid and living trust. This one, there is room available, and right now, you know, I know that uh, taking care of your family is going to be on your mind in this season with Thanksgiving and the, the holidays coming, mm -hmm. so you want to make sure that you call up and make your reservation, because those are going to, it's going to get filled up again, and uh, we won't be doing one until at least January. Yeah, and you know, this, this is the time of year when families get together, and you may notice there's some family members that weren't there last year. Or maybe something's changed that you didn't realize. Maybe someone's gotten divorced. Maybe someone's gotten married. Maybe there's a new grandchild. And, the, and you want to make sure that your documents are updated for all of those changes in your family, in your situation. Attorney Barry Siegel and the Siegel Law Group will review your documents at no charge. The number, 855-FLA-3782. Now call and reserve your spot for that workshop in three weeks because uh, they do fill up. And, I, and uh, there's going to be a call soon enough from Attorney Barry Siegel telling us that it's full. So you want to lock in your spot so you get in 855-FLA-3782 and online SiegelLawGroup.com. All right, Attorney Barry Siegel, we uh, will talk next time. All right. All right. All right. Take care. Take care. You with us, Steve? Okay, good, good. good. I heard a click and I thought you got clicked off. Yeah, but you know, but but Steve, you know this um, this election yesterday, you know, because the first the first night and then yesterday morning, their whole thing, the Democrats were in shell shock. The media were confused and they were pushing this. Well, critical race theory doesn't even exist; it's a myth. And then they realize I'm watching the media yesterday. And so that's what they do. The, uh, the one of them, uh, you know, makes these wild, you know, statements that are. Full of lies. <clears throat> the other one swears. Well, did you? See, well, I saw. 
Did you see Juan Williams on Outnumbered yesterday? Yeah. Oh. I thought... I miss Juan at all. Well, I, I don't miss Juan Williams either, but yesterday was, was, um, was beautiful. Juan Williams was on Outnumbered with Harris Faulkner and McEnany. And he started his thing, that talking point, that critical race theory doesn't exist, it's not a myth, it's not being taught in the schools. And McEnany says it is being taught in Virginia. She says, pull it up, pull it up. And, and she had set this up, I guess, because she knew what crap he was going to pull. And a graphic came up on the screen of the lesson plans in the Virginia schools that they're using. And, and McEnany read through them with with the uh, Virginia school board information on them to Juan Williams he didn't say a damn word he just smiled the whole time he didn't say a damn word he was he was physically ill oh he was humiliated by McEnany yesterday it was be when she said she said yes it is being taught in the schools he says no it's not she says pull it up in the control pull it up and then the graphic comes up and oh my goodness he he turned white for a moment, for just a moment, it was beautiful, outnumbered. And I, I was first, I was pissed that they had Juan Williams on there. I can't stand that guy. Can't stand Juan Williams. He's, he's, uh, I don't know, obsequious. Well, well, you know, Alan Combs was a liberal on Fox, and I he was likable because he will. You know. Yeah, not a talking point guy. Yes, exactly. That's mm -hmm. he's a walking, walking, <clears throat> walking, gigantic walking talking point. Yeah. Then I, I was wait. I was waiting for Tucker to come on last night, and they had your old friend Geraldo on doing that seven o'clock show. You know, and he was talking about um, his Jewish mother and how she hated Christians. It was. A <laughs> I you know I I was surprised he threw his mother under the bus like he did Geraldo last night about how she wouldn't let them have a Christmas tree and all all this stuff and everything but uh, one, one but what they realized outnumbered's on like at noon a little bit and I think it was Fox I think it was that McEnany experience by the afternoon on the other channels the liberals had given up on the uh, on the ones I was watching that critical race theory doesn't exist because the, that 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 moment with Juan Williams changed the narrative and be, they got exposed, yeah. And of course, Fox News is the number one rated cable news network. I wish it was Newsmax, but it's not Newsmax yet. And by the afternoon, they've forgotten that, and are telling and they're telling themselves that they lost because they weren't radical enough. They have to be stronger in their liberal activism, so they got to go further to them. Oh yeah, I I I wish them luck with that. What's the latest <laughs> on the uh, on the Jersey uh, thing? I I know he lost by a hair, but are they going to? Well, apparently, uh, and I, I learned this from watching um, someone on television because I, I don't uh, I don't know how the New Jersey elections typically work, but they do not have if you win by one vote, you win in New Jersey. There's not like an automatic recount in in New Jersey. <clears throat> you can re you can request it and pay if you pay for it. But uh, no one really seems to know what that process means and if it works, if it's possible, if it would change anything. I... As I was getting ready, uh, basically they were, they were talking about the question whether in fact they were going to, the result. The Republican said so, yeah. He, he said he's going to challenge them. Yeah. Not to. I mean, I, would it surprise you? They found that they screwed around with. It. Well, when they start, when the, the the count's so close, so close, you know, we'll see what they find. But um, even if the Democrats pull that through, that's still a shocker for the Democrats because it wasn't supposed to be that way. And the Republican turn. Well, here's the th winning's better, but this is what scares them. I'll tell you, okay? If the Democrats win the governorship in New Jersey, they got it. But the Republican turnout was so big, so much larger than they expected. And House races, we're going to flip seats in New Jersey in the midterms. We're going to flip House seats. It's the country, too. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, not really, I'm not really concerned about the governor of New Jersey so much as the House seats in New Jersey. And that Republican turnout being... 
Yeah, but now we got to focus on taking back the house, getting rid of, uh, you know, Pelosi. I brought this up yesterday, and I'd like somebody out there, we have an encyclopedic audience out there that has a lot of this trivial information from politics, but I'd be very interested to know how many seats we'd have to, if it's possible, after all the counting's done, if we might get control of the House, I'd be interested. We know we're going to get it next time. Not now, we're going to get it next not only are we, when you look at these turnouts, okay, even in Virginia, we're going to flip house seats in Virginia to to um, Republican that are Democrat now. But the turnout's been so much. <clears throat> Especially if they go the way they appear to be going. Mm-hmm. The trend. The trend is, is you know, the way these, the way election, that's right, the way elections tend to work is whoever has the momentum goes on to win. That's why New Jersey is going to probably be the Democrat when they do the re... You know, just like Bush in Florida in 2000. Whoever the whoever it has the trend in their favor wins. And the trend is Republican. And I, I, it, it, and I didn't think this was possible at this level. But um, we're going to have a landslide in the House based on what we saw in New Jersey... Regardless of how it turns out, because Republican turnout was so heavy, and uh, Virginia, it's going to be massive. It's going to be massive, and it's going. <clears throat> the liberals in the Democratic Party. Show know, me some love. Find out the super chat. Thank you, direction. everyone. Thanks. Show me some love. Uh, you subscribe to Fox Nation. Their efforts is, is going to be a bloodbath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, um, I was telling you yesterday how to see Patriot Purge for free. If you go to Tucker Carlson's website, you can see it for free. It's only an hour. All three parts are one hour. And I watched the third part last night, and it was mostly about Ashley Babbitt. And, um, oh my goodness, it was like, make you cry. And there was... the. <clears throat> Well, the, the, the three parts, uh, out of the three parts, part two, I think, was the most important part. Even I know, Part three was about Ashley Babb, and obviously her losing her life is very important. I don't want people to misunderstand me. But in, in part two of Patriot Purge, you get to see how this was a complete psychops false flag operation. And what... What they did, you know, like I was telling that caller earlier about how they uh, they used an undercover informant to lure this DEA agent. And one of the things that came out, they, this this uh, couple in Alaska who didn't even go into the building, the FBI stormed into their house like they did Roger Stone's. They busted down the doors and put the husband and wife in cuffs looking for Pelosi's laptop. They didn't even go in the building. And they had a photograph they said was the woman, and she says, that's not me. And then the FBI agent said to her while she was handcuffed in her living room, do you want me to write down on this report that you lied to the FBI? See, that's what they get you, right? Like they got uh, General Flynn. But there was one interesting thing that came out in part three that didn't involve Ashley Babbitt, which I'm trying, the Ashley Babbitt stuff is very emotional. You know that guy that had his picture taken at Nancy Pelosi's desk with the his leg up on it? They, he did a whole interview with him and his attorney, uh, Tucker Carlson. This is in part three of Patriot Purge. And um, that photograph, there was a member of the media, I'm unclear who it was, but there was a member of the media there that got him to pose for that picture sitting at her desk with his leg up on it. They told him to, now he was foolish to do it, but uh, a member of the media staged that photograph and asked him to sit there and pose at the desk. Yes, it's in Tug it's it's part 3 of Patriot Purge. They get into that. And that that you know that guy in particular, I was pissed at him for doing that, okay? But now we see that the media the media staged that photograph. The plan, the, the Pelosi plan uh, is to try to snatch the momentum uh, from trying to make the villains, you know, this false flag. Steve Kane show. To try to make the, uh, the Steve Kane show. The hey, hold on. Villains, <clears throat> you know, in the plot. Uh, do you think that <clears throat> this is going to this, uh, this uh, special that Tucker did? Will it be able to nip that in the bud? Will it be able to turn that 
what it what it's going to do well okay this is what i th this was an amazing special and it really exposed what they did all three parts okay the second part i mean i about it, it make you cry watching what this country's turned into it's really it's really emotional watching all three parts what tucker did is he's opened up a dialogue about this in a way that no one was thinking about it before. In particular, the guy with his foot up on the desk, I was pissed at him for doing something so stupid because I knew we'd be explaining this for the rest of our lives. But now when I find out that the media set that photo up and staged it and had him pose for them so they could get that image, I saw him in a whole new light. You know, I... Do you think the way it will unfold will be to shine the light on what they were doing? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And and when Trump, I think I believe when Trump runs, um, maybe in the midterms, may, but certainly in twenty twenty four, that's going to be a centerpiece of his campaign. And there's there's one of the uh, um, th this um, uh, one couple, and they and and Tucker Carlson shows the film in the audio. The people were being herded in by these unknown people that they think were federal agents into the building and one couple the the um, the guy with his foot up on the desk he was trying not to enter the building but the crowd was behind him pushing him and you you can hear and see him on the film trying to say I'm, he's trying not to go in and he's being forced in by the crowd behind him unless he wanted to be stomped on so he actually didn't trespass on purpose. He was being forced to trespass across the entrance of the Capitol. And there were a lot of these people like that. Tucker exposed all this. And it's, it's, it's something everyone was... You can... Yes. Yes. Because Tucker's, Tucker's little hour, which is spectacular, is, going to, is opening up a dialogue that didn't exist before on the Capitol breach. And there will be other people who do stories following up on this. And there'll be more, and there'll be more. And eventually everyone will know. Now, now you can watch it on the Fox Nation app. I got the Fox Nation app to watch it, but then afterwards I found out from Tucker Carlson, he talked about it on TV last night, if you go to Tucker Carlson's website, you can watch it for free. So just Google Tucker Carlson, his website will come up. You can watch Patriot Purge, all three parts for free, and you all should. It's 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 uh, and you need to find a way to watch it too, Steve at home. It's it's um, it's it's must see TV. Uh, yeah. All right. Listen, we'll take our uh, last break of the day. Come back with the gold report. It's the Steve Kane show. Steve is here. I'm Brian Craig. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We've got you covered. AM 1470, FM 95.3, 96.9, South Florida's FM Money Talk Radio Network, WWNN, Pompano Beach. Hey guys, Brian Craig here. I have the MyPillow slippers at Mike Lindell. He's right. Steve Kane Show. Steve Kane Show. Okay, hold on. We'll take your call after the break. Hold on. My slippers. Brian, I have the uh, MyPillow uh, slippers and I have neuropathy. These are fantastic slippers. Really? Which ones do you have? Which style do you have? The fur line. Well, well Hannity's the probably jealous. Systems. I don't know about Laura, but Hannity looks so uh, vanilla and boring and irrelevant and compared to Tucker now, you know? So Laura's on too late for me. I like her, but I, I don't watch her show because I can't stay up that late. distancing and sheltering in place. Many people have been forced to neglect their feet. We at the Soul Authority are making it possible for you to still take care of your feet while remaining in your home as we 
will send a doctor to your house for all of your podiatric needs. The best part of all is that Medicare pays for hey there, this visit. So, <laughs> if you're a Medicare recipient, give the sole authority a call today. 954-597-7600. <clears throat> 954-597-7600. All right, we are back, and it's that time when we check in with William Youngerman, live from the offices of William Youngerman Incorporated, right here in Boca Raton, with the Morning Gold and Precious Metals Report. William Youngerman, good morning. Good morning, Brian. Uh, Precious Metals, uh, trading <clears throat> higher this morning after giving up $18 uh, yesterday. We, we, we see that back and forth action again, but... Uh, uh, yesterday we saw gold down eighteen dollars and forty cents at seventeen hundred and sixty nine dollars and thirty cents the ounce, while silver was down two cents at twenty three dollars and forty nine cents. Platinum lost eight dollars at a thousand twenty seven, and palladium lost eight dollars also at nineteen hundred thirty six dollars. This morning <coughs> turning right around this morning, uh, even re sorry even guys, regardless of I a very strong right. U.S. dollar, gold up twenty dollars at seventeen hundred eighty nine dollars and thirty cents. Silver up thirty six cents at twenty three dollars and eighty five cents the ounce. Platinum up nine dollars right now at nineteen hundred and thirty six dollars, and palladium up forty eight dollars at nineteen eighty four. So markets uh, still showing uh, some good resilience to any kind of <coughs> lower uh, 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 prices and uh, a lot of buying coming in at these low. Yeah. Buy on the dips. Buy on the dips. That's right. Now, uh, William Ringman obviously does sell the metals, and they're all available for immediate delivery, but also buys the metals. Anything you have made of the metals, take them in for an appraisal, turn it into money, or turn it into a coin so you can monitor the value of that wealth. And you'd be surprised what you have. I, I, um, I took some, some things into William Ringman a few weeks ago that I didn't realize were worth much of anything, and I found out that I had some constitutional silver <laughs> and uh, boy, did my uh, do you want to? What is constitutional silver, William? For people that may not know what they have at home. Oh no, it's the it's the ninety percent silver. I. I had some nineteen sixty four coins, and I said, "Well, let me see what they're they're worth," and I found out they were worth some money. And I did not know that. So, uh, well, they're over at your place now, William Youngerman. But it was it was a nice day. Listen, um, give them a call over there. They open up at 10, 1-800-327-5010. 1-800-327-5010. You never know what you have lying around that's worth some money. WilliamYoungerman.com online. And the address, 150 East Palmetto Park Road in Boca. On the first floor of the Bank of America building immediately east of US 1 Federal Highway on the south side of Palmetto Park Road. All right, William, I'm going to have a great day. We will finish out the week tomorrow. All right. All right, take care. We'll talk on Friday. All right, take care. Oh, man, Steve, this is a great time. You know, um, the mansion interview, which I'm going to watch after the show today, you saw some of it? Okay, but you didn't pick up anything about it because I, I got several messages from listeners telling me that he knocked it out of the park. So if we have just a few minutes left. If you saw the Mansion interview, give us a call at one triple eight go cane one I want to hear what he said to Brett Baer. You're on the radio. Good morning, Call. You're on the radio. Uh, yes, I just wanted to mention your caller that just called in, uh, you know, your last caller a few minutes ago. Uh, yes, I agree with him uh, regarding um, people have to open up their eyes about what's going on. My aunt, who was in her teens in World War II, and my dad and his brothers all enlisted and came back safe, thank God. Um, she always said, and I never understood her growing up, that the communists said they would get us from within and infiltrate us from within because they couldn't win us at war and they would infiltrate through the school systems and they would uh, divide and conquer just like what Hitler has done and now you can see it and people do not have to wake up because we're in the final stages right now and I know a couple of people from communist countries who I yeah. hear were shaking in their pants when they saw what was happening saying 
Well, what this is what's happened. You know, um, your apps, everything you're saying is correct. But what the Democrats have done is something. In if it wasn't for this special of Tucker Carlson, that is going to start something. Who knows what would have happened? But what they've done is they found a way they thought to discredit the Republican Party. That was the Capitol breach. And what Tucker is 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 showing is how it was an organized false flag by the opposition. And that's very important because they're blaming us for this incident that they, in fact, are responsible for. Yeah. That the same thing, and it took this long now. But the, okay, but here's here's the difference because a lot a lot of a lot of people thought that, but what what's happening now is we we're getting uh, expert evidence and eyewitness evidence and video showing that it's true. A lot of people I, I hear from a lot of people this week. Oh, I already knew that. Well, you know, we we know when someone goes on trial, they they probably did it, but you have to bring in experts and witnesses and evidence to prove it. Right now, because Tucker created this special series, in the business, it's viewed right now kind of as a Tucker project. Yep. What we have to do is try to, we have to hope that it breaks out of the Tucker identity and spreads into all the other Fox stations and stuff like uh, other shows on Fox. Yeah. And then it becomes not Tucker's baby, but it becomes general known. Yeah. Well, I, I, from what I've heard is uh, Hannity didn't even reference it because, you know, he's jealous, you know. He's, well, you know. That's, the, that's the problem. That's the problem. Now, don't look to, don't look for Geraldo to promote. Jealous. <clears throat> Bongino. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's too much jealousy. There's a lot of jealousy going on with these guys. And with, with, what, what was that caller? Yeah. Only the brave. Will come forward. Mm-hmm. And the people that are walking in the light. Those. Are well. Well, you know, it's important because. See, they, they almost, that, but yeah, and they, they almost, they almost pulled it off. They almost pulled it off. And, 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 and I don't think people appreciate Tucker Carlson enough. And I, and I, you know, he, he is taking a lot of risks here. They are after him like you wouldn't believe. And, and I, we had a caller last week, we were talking about this, who said, well, why, why didn't they put it on Fox instead of on the pay thing? Well, he's offering it for free on his website, but I, I think it is so powerful that they wouldn't let him put it on regular Fox News. Steve Kane well, because they're afraid of the... I, I agree. Hold on. Yeah. Now, listen. I, hey, listen. Thank... You, you there, Steve? That lost you. Thanks for... Okay, we're almost out of time, so we got. It's time to check in with Janet Cimarelli with the health report. So we got her on the line here, Janet Cimarelli. Good morning. Janet, how are you doing this morning? People know that we're all looking for very similar things: a long life, a health-supported life, and we want to do it naturally. We don't necessarily want to be taking all kinds of different pharmaceutical chemicals. Well, if you're dealing with the symptoms of aging, your blood pressure is going a little high, maybe your cholesterol is a little out of proper ratio, your blood sugar, and all of those things add up to possibly some issues with your heart, uh, painful joints and muscles. Maybe your brain is not working just the way you want it to work. Your memory, oh, what's that word I want again? Maybe your sleep is it restorative. I just want to let everybody know that when they bring their blood test results to me, I can take a look and give them some guidance supporting natural function, supporting those functions with natural holistic approaches. So we have all kinds of minerals to support your good health. We 
have the vitamins that are going to be supporting your immune system. So we have it all at AJ's and free nutrition counseling. So I'll give you some ideas about the foods to choose and the foods to avoid. Yeah, and uh, AJ's is located in the Festival Marketplace, which of course is just immediately east of the Turnpike on the south side of Pompano, of, of uh, Sample Road, I mean. And it's very easy to find. When you go into the Festival Marketplace, south side of Sample, just east of the Turnpike, um, you go to the food court, right? Turn around and you'll see AJ's Natural right there next to the information booth. You cannot miss it. You can also give them a call at 954 954- 317-1851, 954-317-1851, and I'll be stopping by this week a little later on because I've got to reload on my uh, on my supplements myself. AJ's Natural, and don't forget, uh, tomorrow, Friday at 10 a.m. on this radio station, catch Janet on the radio with her, uh, her radio show on Nutraceuticals. All right, Janet, have a great day. We'll finish out the week tomorrow. Okay. All right, take care. All right, Steve, you want to sign us off? We're out of time. Oh, and, uh, that sounds gay, Steve. <laughs> Steve what? That, so- that sounds gay when you say companion. It does- you don't want people to misunderstand. <laughs> the shadow knows. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, see you tomorrow. God bless America. We've got you covered. Hey, All right, guys, I got to run, but uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you like the video before you go. All right? All right, take care, guys. Thanks for watching.